Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. Uh, name's Frank. Welcome to tonight's live stream. Just finishing getting everything set up. Got to make sure I'm not uh, doing some double audio nonsense. Looks like we got this going. And all right, a little bit of background noise. So uh, we get rid of that dead air. So tonight's stream is going to be a little bit different. I don't have full access to the um, to the live chat because I'm so far away from the TV. It's uh, near impossible to see. So I'm going to be relying on my moderators and my mouse that isn't working right now to actually go ahead and find it, everything for me. There we go. Get out of studio mode. All right, cool. Now I can actually see myself. So trying to like monitor everything from here, you know? So I can see that the stream uh, health is good. Um, I wanted that kind of uh, in the forefront. This way I can actually see everything and uh, everything's looking good. I want to have my discord up. Let's see, let's see. Audio out of sync. Uh oh, how do we fix this last time? We fixed this last time. There's a way we fix this. Hold on, hold on. We got this. Hang on. <laughs> I think I just need to reset my mics. Hold on. <laughs> the mics were the last thing I had to do because I was literally about to start the stream and then I realized, oh no, my mic was still hanging on the wall. So uh, let's try it now. I don't remember how we fixed this last time. I'm waiting for some, for, for, the, for the, the, give it a good kick. Sick. All right, maybe that might work. All right. Thanks. Hope you guys enjoy the table. Um, yeah, I got my Discord chat open so my mods can uh, figure it out. Still out of sync. Oh, no. How did we fix this last time, guys? Do you remember? Oh, yeah. I remember how. We got this. Stand by. I believe that should fix it. Yeah, I believe we had just reset the camera. This table is huge, so I have to go under the table, but uh, hopefully that fixes it. Um, take a shot every time. No, you do not do that. Um, hi, Layla. Hi, hi, Lainey. Uh, I miss you guys a lot. Uh, hi, Des. Yeah, I miss you guys, so it's cute that you're watching. Um, let's see if that fixed the audio problem. And uh, yeah, I believe we reset the camera. So two things we're gonna be um, trying to fix, five minutes in the stream are always my favorite. Yeah, they're not fixed. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> it made it worse. <laughs> uh. What are you doing to me, OBS? You're killing me. <laughs> it's horrible now. <laughs> Do, do. And how about now? We got it. We got it, guys. British internet, man. It's killing me. So, it's, <laughs> it's in another multiverse. Like a solid 20 second. So stream health is still good, which is uh, beneficial to this whole situation. Yes, there is a giveaway. Let's try to get that fixed. Doo -doo. Oh no. Stop that. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Mm -mm. I don't like audio delays. I want to fix this because I have a lot to talk about. And uh, though we can get, we can, we can survive with some of it. I don't want to deal with it this time. So 
I'm gonna hard reset everything and you guys, here, we'll do this. So uh, you guys don't have to stare at the screen. So please hold. And we might be back, guys. Hold on. <laughs> Let's test it out now. No, everything for the first time in a while is perfectly charged. The lav mic's good, the receiver's good, the camera's good. So uh, we'll get that last little bit of input. Um, and waiting for the chat to catch up. Maybe. I'll take it. Cool. Let's get this started. <laughs> Welcome. The first, the first 10 minutes are always the best. Uh, I appreciate you guys. So uh, two things we're going to be covering tonight. <laughs> um, why don't my phone stay open for the Discord? Hold on. Let me turn off the timeout so my screen stays open so I, I don't have to keep timing this out. Auto lock. Um, mm -mm, mm -mm. Sick. All right, cool. So, with Black Friday, um, good enough. It's the guy from Insta, but not Peru. Little bit, little bit of audio popping. Yeah. So the crackle. Um, that's probably just from me moving around. Oh no, we figured this out last time too. Yeah. I have a microphone, um, an extra microphone plugged into the back of the computer. That should stop the crackle, actually. Uh, and there's a little bit of an echo in the room. So, yeah, that one's set to three. That's fine. We're going to have to um, deal with that. So, sorry if there is a little bit of a crackle, but it's also for me moving around. The, I do have the fuzzy thing fixed back on my microphone. I did find more, so that helps. So, let's see. Nine minutes in. We started a little late. Had to get everything fixed up. With Black Friday coming up, um, I wanted to talk about printers. A lot of more people are messaging me asking, hey, I'm looking to get one for Black Friday, I'm looking to get one for the holidays, I'm looking to get one in general just to start printing. And there are a lot of options out there, not just Creality, but the you know Artillery, Prusa. Um, I just did a review on the Sunlu. Like, there's a lot of options out there, and I wanted to actually take the time to, whew, all the back and forth, sorry guys. <laughs> um, I wanted to take some time to actually explain to you in the live and answer those questions. What are, what's the best starter printer I would recommend? If you're looking to do stuff for cosplay and bigger stuff, what kind of stuff would, uh, would I personally recommend? Um, so that's what I wanna go over for this stream. Now, again, it's very hard for me to see the chat on the TV. Um, so I do have my moderators picking out very specific questions that pertain to this. Don't ask questions that don't really pertain to this tonight. Maybe we'll do a, a little bit of a, um, uh, an open general Q&A at the end there where you can ask any questions you want. But this is more about if you're interested in upgrading a printer, you wanna know some of the differences, you wanna know some of the size comparisons. I have a lot of information to divvy out here, so please bear with it. And then kind of near the end, um, I'll be answering a lot of those questions. So. Let's kind of jump right in. Now, if there's anybody here watching who doesn't know what 3D printing is, you're, you just, you see it as this thing that, you know, it's just, it's this outlandish thing you just never understood. Maybe you saw my TikTok, maybe you saw me on Instagram, YouTube, wherever the heck you found me. But you're trying to figure out how out somebody could make something like this out of something like this. And you can, this can absolutely make this. It is well within, it, within its power, but as you can see, there's a little bit of a size difference here. This doesn't fit in this on one, one part. For all of you, you guys who actually know what 3D printing is, I just wanna catch everybody up to give them just a little synopsis of it so they understand what they're kind of getting into. Obviously, I'm not gonna give a full 3D printing tutorial right now, but I want you guys to, uh, who the people who don't know, to better understand like, oh, hey, that's oh, okay, this makes sense. Um, it's not ink, it's plastic. Uh, you can print in colors, but you don't have to. So there's a lot of little tidbits 
And if you guys want after this, I do have a ton of tutorials to help you get started with how to start 3D printing, how to like, the hardware, understanding the printer. So there's a lot of information out there, uh, a lot of information on my channel, a lot of information on channel like uh, the 3D Printing Nerd and Shep and all these other 3D printing kind of based channels that can really help you get started. So what are we looking at here and how does 3D printing work? First thing I want to explain to you is you don't need to know how to 3D model to 3D print. Hold on, let me get out of studio mode. I just realized why I'm having difficulty looking at the screen. Hey, I can see it now. Awesome. Um, so upgrade, yeah. So 3D printing, a lot of people assume that I know how to 3D model. I have no idea how to 3D model. I didn't 3D model any of this stuff. The most complicated thing I've done is cut up the parts and add some like slots for like metal rods and stuff. There are two different realms. Now there are 3D modelers who 3D print. A lot of people who 3D print know how to 3D model. I don't know how. I never needed to learn how because everything I wanted to make already exists. I, you can download these files offline. Everything you see in this room, every single thing I've printed, except the Dragon Ball Z figures, I bought those. And like some of that stuff. But you can download all this stuff offline. Some stuff costs money. The files for this are about 100 to $125 depending. The shield, the Keyblade, um, this shield, some different helmets. You can get really nice quality 3D files for free. And I actually updated the description of this video to give you guys where to get the software, where to get the files, where to get free files, where to get paid files. So you can go in there and just start downloading 3D files as much as you want. You can download most of this stuff. And even on my Discord, I have a whole section with every single thing I've ever printed. My Infinity Stone props, the Samus helmet, literally everything I've ever made on my channel and Instagram, I have a list of where I got every single file. Not, not every single one of them is free, but you get what you pay for. That's kind of the running theme. Now you can, again, you can find quality 3D models, but typically if you want full suits, if you want these really extravagant pieces, you're gonna have to pay for them. So you go, you get the file, somebody else already designed it, kind of like this Iron Man helmet here. Somebody else already designed it and you wanna 3D print this. So you get the files, you download the software completely free. I use something called Ultimaker Cura. You download it, you put it on your computer. Um, it, is, it does cooperate with Mac, but I think there's only certain versions that do, so you gotta, you gotta have to look at that, uh, Mac OS X and all that. But uh, PC, I think you can use it on some tablets too. Don't quote me on that though. Um, yeah, so let me see if my mods have anything to say extra. So far they're doing, okay. Stream's kinda quiet, don't wanna miss out on anything, it's good. So, yeah. You, uh, you get yourself a printer. You're still in the market trying to figure out what printer you want. Do you want a really small printer to print small things? Do you want something big to print big, big things? Um, so you have the programs, you have the files, you wanna dive in, but you're still trying to figure out, uh, do I wanna spend five, $600? Do I wanna spend $160? And that can be some of the price differences of this. Now, one thing I wanna to explain to a lot of people, and it's changing in the 3D printing field is, this does the same thing as this, does the same thing as this, does the same thing as that. All of, all of these printers, especially the Creality ones, do the same thing. And what I mean by that, it's not a matter of this puts out better quality than this, or this puts out, it's a matter of features and ease of use. These do all the same thing. If this can outperform the $600 one, the $600 one can outperform the $160 one. It just depends on how good you get at the hobby. There is a learning curve, this is a hobby, these aren't plug and play appliances. You can't just build this plug in and expect to get really nice, smooth, perfect prints every time. You do need to learn how to do it. But there's tutorials and guides and all a huge community for all this stuff. So it's a, a lot of people kind of bite off more than they're expecting because you know you get overzealous. I did. I bought this. This is my first 3D printer right here. This blue one it was my very first one. I bought it and I was like, let's do it. I did not do anywhere near the amount of research I needed to, and I, this was my first big project. It worked out pretty good so far. So you need to understand that this is a bare bones printer. This is a Creality Ender 3. This one could be had for anywhere between 160 to 200 US dollars. I got this one for $160 on Amazon. It was on a really good sale. And with Black Friday coming up in the holidays, you're probably gonna be able to get it for about that price. This thing is awesome. It look like, look at it, it's tiny. It literally fits on your desktop. This is the whole printer. Um, on a scale of one to 10, I'd say it's probably a five out of six, five to six out of 10 in difficulty to build it. It does come in a lot more parts. Um, there is, the instructions aren't bad, but there are a couple confusing things about it. I did a live build on it. 
Um, there's tons of tutorials all over YouTube to how to build this thing and calibrate it. This, if you're looking to get into the hobby with your kids, your family, whatever, and you're not sure you want to invest the six, seven hundred dollars in a giant printer, get this thing because they also resell for basically what you paid for them. You can throw the, I can throw this online for 130, 140 bucks right now and only have lost a couple bucks in a couple hours of my life testing on a new hobby. So if you're looking to make smaller things and get your feet wet, an Ender 3, like this is it. This is the, still the printer I recommend the most. Unless, and there's an unless. Check in the chat. <laughs> unless, um, that, uh, how do I explain this? Unless you want to make big things. Now, you have very tiny little prints right here. I have a little Eyebach model right here, okay? And I, you know what? You know what I just realized this looks like, guys? Um, this looks like a, uh, um, what's it called? Like QVC infomercial, right? Like the layout, like, and then you have here, you can see this, and then, oh, this is only $29.99, and then, like, some numbers will pop up. That'd be kind of fun, actually. Um, am I in the wrong chat? I don't think I'm in the wrong chat. I think I'm just being tagged in things. I don't want to miss anything my mods are saying. Oh, yeah, they know. Okay, cool, cool, cool. We're good. We're good. So, to my mods, um, I, uh, yeah, I can't actually hear what you guys are saying. So, you guys can talk and then post the question because obviously I don't want to, I can't listen to the phone while we're talking. So, uh, I can actually read a little bit of it and I just want to skim it. Cool, cool, cool. It's nice to have all you guys here. It's really cool to like be doing this and I'm really excited to be doing this. So, uh, yeah. Hi. Anyway, I guess there is a giveaway. I'm going to talk about that probably around 40 minutes or so. I want to do it halfway through the stream. It's going to force you guys to kind of stay here a little longer, but we'll talk about that. Um, yeah. So if you want to get started, you want to start out, this, this is the printer. And there's some confusion with like the ease of the hobby. And it can be deterring because you're going to run into problems. I promise you, you are going to run into problems. The worst thing that could happen to you is that you don't run into any problems right out of the box. That this thing works perfectly. Then when a problem pops up a couple months down the road, you're not going to know what to do. You're going to, uh, uh, why, why is this leaking from spots it shouldn't leak from? Why isn't this getting hot? Why isn't this moving? Why did my print shift? So there are things that are going to go wrong, but again, there's a community, there's support. So it's a, once you start to learn how the printer works, the sky's the limit. It really is. So Creality Ender 3, like a buck 60. So uh, that one is, this is to get your feet wet. Now, say you, you came to my channel and you're like, oh man, like, I wanna make this thing. Like, okay, that's cool. What if you wanted to make this? This is my first 3D printed project right here. This is a, a Keyblade from Kingdom Hearts. This 100% this can be printed on this printer. It, it, I promise you, you can, I, you can print this on this. And what I, I mean by that, let me throw this back up on the wall so it doesn't fall on my head and hurt me. This, this, and this, these parts will make that keyblade. And as you can see, they fit on this little Creat, this little Ender 3. Now there's very similar printers around this size. The, uh, the, the pretty pricey uh, Prusa Mark III is about this size. Um, I think it's actually a little bit smaller, maybe 223. Don't quote me on that. I think it's about the same size. But there's printers like the Annette's. Um, there's printer, uh, I don't think artillery has something quite this small, but this fits on this build plate. This is actually the build plate size to this printer and it fits, see? Perfect, cool. So you print things in tiny parts. You can print them in sections. Obviously, I didn't have a printer that printed this whole thing in one shot. That just would have been a, that would have been a little bit crazy. And um, doo -doo -doo. not a lot of questions or nothing we can't handle ourselves. Cool. There he goes trying to read the chat anyway. What do you think of the CR10 S5 by J? What is that? J Chester? Gile? Gile Chester? I'm probably butchering that. We'll get to the big printers. We're going to talk about the Max. We're going to talk about the S5. And we're going to talk about why I don't like the S5. So I'll, 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 I'll feed you there a little bit. But so you print things in sections like this. And as you take them apart, you glue them together. Now, again, we're not going to talk about how to finish the prints and glue that. That's, I have tutorials. There's tutorials all over the place. That's literally what my channel's for. But you guys, I hope you're here because you're just trying to decide on what printer to get and you want information on it. So as you can see, 
you can make big things with even these tiny small printers. And that's all, that's all it is. It's, it's basically a Lego kit at this point um, that needs glue and painting and sanding and some frustration. So that's fine. We'll put those there. Why won't this just stay on? <laughs> um, hold on. I need to get this to just stay on. Yeah, that should be it. Cool. All right. What about those fancy new belt printers? We're going to talk about the CR30 as well, so stay tuned for that. Okay. So these right here are the two printers I recommend the most. If you're having the conversation with your family and you're talking um, like, hey, uh, we want to start making tiny things, you know? If a helmet, something like a helmet, a Mandalorian helmet, an Iron Man helmet, at any time, if something that is about the size of a helmet is probably the biggest you feel you're going to go right out the gate, get the Ender 3. Now, there are a couple versions of the Ender 3. Uh, there's the Ender 3, this one. There's the Ender 3 Pro, a little bit better. It has a couple extra features. And then there's a new Ender 3 V2. Personally, I don't like the V2. I don't think it's worth it. It has a, a silent main board and it has a couple extra features that uh, make it quiet, make it print just a little bit better. It has a few upgraded parts. However, you can get this $160 Ender 3, dump about $50, $60 into it, get that silent board, get a better build surface, add a couple reliability parts to it, and you're still cheaper than that V2 that would then need those upgrades. So I don't recommend the V2 to anybody right now. And I have a couple friends who've already been having problems with it. So I'd still suggest the Ender 3. And then if you can get the Ender 3 Pro, that's still pretty worth it because it comes with the bed and it comes with just a little bit of a stronger frame. Um, so this is definitely a nice printer to have in that instance. And I don't know if anybody out there can really touch this price point right now. Um, Prusa, definitely not. Like I said, I don't think artillery has anything this cheap. Um, TiVo doesn't have anything this cheap or small that's this reliable. Um, yeah, this really, this might, the Ender 3 really kind of has the corner, uh, the market cornered on that. So that's kind of cool. So, yeah. Hmm. Let me check the chat. The two questions that were asked so far, they're kind of for a little bit later in the stream. Have you ever made a prop without a 3D printer? No. I mean, like, I played around with cardboard when I was a kid. Um, I'd make, like, you know, you make like fake swords and like a helmet or something. Um, but actually finished like a nice prop sword without a printer? No, I've been printing everything and it's worked out pretty good. There are armors and props and weapons and stuff that I probably wouldn't 3D print. You, you're better off using foam for them just because their size or their complexity. Um, but me, myself, no, I have not actually. That's a good question. It's a great question. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, da -da. Sovol, I have heard of the Sovol. Um, haven't really done much research on it though, so I can't, I know a good amount about the artillery. I know, um, I know a whole lot more about the Sunlu S8 now. Um, so I can comment on those. I don't want to too much. This is my experience with Creality printers and some of the other printers I've messed with. I don't want to speculate on printers that I haven't messed with because I don't want to say the wrong thing about them or blah, blah, blah. Um, I've had great luck with these Creality printers. I really have, they're cheap and they work beautifully. Anycubic has a similarly sized printer also. There is an Anycubic, okay. One of my mods just informed me there is a similarly priced and sized Anycubic. Maybe check that out. Um, hop in some of their forums and do some reviews online. Um, I can't imagine that there probably isn't some type of um, comparison between the two. Um, and there's also, you'll also run into bootleg printers. They're, um, they're knockoffs. They're, they, they look exactly like a Creality printer. Or they look exactly like a Prusa, a Prusa um, but they'll have just a weird name and they're clones. And sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. So when are we gonna get you into, when are we gonna get into resin printing? Uh, maybe one day, I'm saving up for that, uh, P the P.O. Poly, Piopoly, whatever, Phenom L, that big resin printer that Uncle Jesse has. We're gonna, uh, one day, one day, someday. So anyway, back to the topic. If you're looking to get into printing and you think, like I said, the biggest thing that you're gonna make is a helmet, start with this. Because even though if I had started with this and eventually bought this, this thing is still a workhorse. I still use my Ender 3. I, I print stuff with it all the time. Um, it printed most of these little Infinity Stone props you see scattered around the room. It is an absolute workhorse. So having a smaller printer that can print pretty fast compared to a larger printer that, you know, it's a good yin and yang to kind of have there to play back and forth. 
it's just going to add to your arsenal, if you will. And you very well, if you kind of watch my last live stream, you can sell prints, and I'm not even gonna really get into that right now, but you can make money selling 3D printed parts as long as you abide by the right laws and the licenses, and you can get this hobby to pay for itself, get an Ender 3, sell some stuff, save up, get a bigger printer. There's nothing wrong with that. That is 100% something people do. So, smaller than a helmet size kind of thing, start with an Ender. Start with a little Ender 3, work up from there, see if you like the hobby, get your feet wet. But you're like, no, I wanna build that. I want. I want that thing in my room. I want to make the big swords. I want to make the big shields, props, whatever. You want to make this. This is the, this is that this is the same Captain America shield that's sitting right up here. This it's only fused together and not painted. And this was printed in four parts. Now, if I was to print this on my Ender 3, this would take a lot more time to actually print. I would have needed to print this in, instead of four pieces, roughly 10 to 12 pieces. However, on something like a CR10S, four pieces. Four. That's four. So what I mean by that is now we're going to start moving up in size. And that's what I kind of want to show you guys. I think if you're going, personally, I think if you're going to get into cosplay, if you're going to get into prop making, replica making, this is kind of the standard size you want to go for. This is a 300 by 300 by 400 millimeter build surface. And as you can see, it can fit helmets much, much better. It can basically, depending on how you orient it, you can one-shot helmets. You can one-shot Mandalorian helmets. People love these things for Mandalorian helmets. Oh my God. Um, Iron Man helmets. You know, any um, Batman cowls are a little bit like, a little bit too big for that. But this is the printer I started with. This kept popping up as the highest rated cosplay 3D printer. 300 by 300 by 400. That just seems to be the very like average size for these things. You have the Creality CR-10S, the CR-10, the, CR, the CR-10 Pro, Pro V2, um, you have the Artillery Sidewinder, you have the Sunlu S8. You have a lot of printers that mimic this exact size because it works so well. It's just big enough to fit these one-shot props and it's not so small that you know you need to cut it up into more pieces. So this is this is also a glass plate that comes with it. It's a little bit hard to see. Eh, actually, I see, you can see that pretty fine. Wow, look at that. It's dirty. I don't use this thing anymore. I hate this thing. Yep, so we're gonna put that back there. So the 300 by 300 by 400, that's really like the atypical size for these things. Uh, let me pop into the chat and see if any new questions were asked. Ooh, getting a lot of good ones. Wow. How do you make time to 3D print stuff? How do you make time to 3D print stuff? Well, that's the cool thing about this hobby. Um, a lot of people will comment and say, oh, I, I, you know, oh, you must have such good patience. I, I'm, I, I can never wait for something to print. So you never go to bed, you never go to work, like you never eat dinner, you never spend time with other, like these things work by themselves. Once you learn it, you don't need to sit there and watch the print the whole time. You don't need to actually like let it do its job. Just start the print, leave. There are safety features you can put in. These printers come with safety features or you can add more safety features to them. So they don't overheat. They don't, you know, like the old Annette eights, they don't catch fire. These all have thermal runaway protection, which means if some weird stuff starts to happen with the nozzle getting too hot, it turns off and stops the print. Safety features. You can add webcams. You can add, I have remote control for my phone to all of my printers in my print room. I can turn them on and off as I please. I can watch them with a webcam. I can be at work and just, all right, cool. That, oh, that print's failing. Let me turn that you know, printer off. You will have print failures. Errors will happen. And if you're not prepared for them or you're not being realistic about them, it is kind of a deterrent. But once you push past them or you're like, eh, things happen, things get messed up, you'll do absolutely fine. So you let the printer just do its work. You know, you set it up, let it go, go leave, and you'll start to get more comfortable with it. When I first got this printer, I'd like send like a four, a four hour print was too much for me. I'd be like, ah, that's a long time. Like, oh, I gotta be careful. And like, I come back every half hour being like, is it done yet? Like, is it, you get, you get nervous, but then you start to get more comfortable. Like you get done with your four hour print and then you start to think, let me try to make like a five hour print and then you make a five hour and then a six hour print and then you see like your first like 10 hour print and you're like, oh man, oh boy. And you, you start to get more comfortable with it. Um, my most recent print was four days on my CR-10 Max. It printed fine. So you build up for it. Uh, 96, 98 hours, something like that. Um, doo -doo -doo. How much do you think you spend in all your 3D printing stuff? I can never get that number because I have affiliate links. I have sponsorships. I have different... 
I, I'm not a good metric for this. Um, I have YouTube, I have you guys. Every time you watch a video, you help the channel out. You know, The best metric I could possibly get you is how many empty rolls of filament I have. And last I calculated that, that was roughly $1,700 to $1,800 worth of empty spools. But I've won contests, Creality sent me printers, so uh, I don't spend that much money in this. This whole hobby is self-sufficient now for me um, because of you guys. Like, If you guys didn't watch my videos and follow my Instagram and all that stuff, none of this would be possible. I'd probably just have the suit done and that'd be it. Um, for anybody wondering, this suit cost me $700 to make. I don't include the cost of the printer because the printer paid for itself. I started selling props. I started selling helmets on the side and I got money back for the printer. I've paid for this multiple times over now by selling props, but this whole suit, plastic, paint, electronics, everything, the files, $700, as opposed to the $10,000 one, $10, ones you can buy online. I don't know, that seems worth it to me. Oh, and I have an awesome hobby and I get to make anything I want, so that's fun. Um, any advice on choosing a 3D printer design? For example, Core XY standard moving bed. Ooh, ooh, we can address that right now. Um, I'm behind, very behind on the questions, guys, so <laughs> work, work with me here. All right, so we talked about the larger printer. Smaller than a helmet, Ender 3, bigger than a helmet, and we're gonna talk about different features on the Creality CR-10S. So the CR-10S, it's a standard printer. The way they work is the bed moves in and out, and then the gant this gantry moves up and down. The nozzle actually moves up and down, left and right, okay? It has a control box right here on the side, whereas the Ender, the control box is all built, this is an all-in-one printer. You know, you can, it's all in one, it's one solid piece. This has some control wires. It's gonna, it's gonna have a bigger footprint. It's gonna take up a little bit more room. Now, if you look over here to this printer, this one doesn't have a control box. And you'll also notice that it's in a cube form. So instead of, let me take this bed right here. Instead of these printers, the bed moving forward and back, forward and back, forward and back. This bed actually lowers down. So the top of the printer here moves forward and back, left and right, and then the bed itself actually is suspended in the air and actually starts to lower itself down. And the print basically start, is always being printed from the very top here. This, this type of design is referred to as a Core XY. However, this isn't actually a true Core XY printer. An actual Core XY 3D printer utilizes a, a very special belt system on the top and it actually lets you print much faster by reducing the weight of this whole system moving on the top. For the sake of this stream, and I don't care what anybody comments, I'm calling this a Core XY because the Z is what moves down, okay? I don't care what you guys have to say. This is a faux Core XY um, because it's more stable. So you can imagine as, as this printer, as this bed is moving in and out, in and out, right, forward and back, as a print gets taller, it could potentially wobble back and forth. Now you can adjust the speeds, you can add supports, you can do a lot to mitigate any weird um, patterns that start to form or sweat, or it's called Z-banding sometimes, and the print will move. This doesn't have any of that problems because the bed is lowering it down itself, you can print much faster and the print isn't actually gonna sway left and right, it's just gonna lower itself down. I can print more than double the speed on this thing than I can on these. Now again, there's a caveat to that. If you're only printing something like the, the half of this orb, that's not tall at all. I can print this very fast, but if I start to go and print something, I don't know, say, you'd think I have something around me, right? Something like this blade, this giant sword blade, okay? As this moves back and forth, it's gonna wobble, depending on the speed you have it at. So you have to print something taller, slower. However, on a faux Core XY printer like this, I think it's called a Cardison printer, um, it just will lower down. And actually, these two parts right here were printed exactly on this printer at a very, very fast speed. And then what you do is you cut them apart and then you end up having something like this. This is a, the blade of, well, they are the blades of chaos from God of War. So you fuse them together and then you have a re really tall print. And as you see, it's much taller than all the printers that are around me, but you get to fuse them together and then you, you, get, you can paint them, you can do whatever you want with them. I'm gonna add chains to this one. I wanna be like Kratos. Um, maybe if like, I start going bald one day, I can do like a Kratos cosplay. So that would be kind of fun. Do, do, do. Put that there. So, standard Creality bed uh, Y moving, the Y axis moves, the Z axis moves on this, it lowers down. 
So these are kind of the, that's what somebody was asking when they said Core XY. These are great, but they have a kind of an odd footprint and they can be a little bit more temperamental um, when you build them. So there is a little bit more of a learning curve on these ones. Let me try to get back to some of these questions. Hi Frank and, oh, whoa. Ooh, doo -doo. Okay. Any advice on choosing a 3D printer design for okay? Uh, Frank chat, any thoughts on the Ender 6? Um, MJ Studio, what are your thoughts on the CR6 and the CR6 Max? Okay, I wanna say this. Um, I don't see the point. The CR, the Ender 6 and the CR6s, uh, it seems like Creality is kind of just juggling features and combining things. Um, they have the silent boards, they have the Core XY styles, they have the moving beds, they have them. They have a lot of these features and there's no, it doesn't seem to be a lot more innovation. The most innovative thing they've put out, I think recently is the CR, um, the CR30, the, the belt printer. The CR Max, I think the CR6 Max is like the size of this Ender 5 Plus. Like there's not, they're not offering um, these big dynamic ranges and honestly it's starting to get kind of confusing. It's even confusing me. I haven't looked too much into the printers. Um, they do have a couple neat features, but nothing that I think I would pick those over these. And with any type of new printers and completely new frames and styles that they're putting out, there's going to be bugs. There's already a couple bugs, I think, with a few of them. Um, whereas they've upgraded the CR-10S plenty of times. They've, up they've gone through all the trials and tribulations with the Ender 3. So these things, you know, they have less problems and failures typically because they've been out for so long. People have been able to figure out and weed out all those bugs. These newer style printers that they're putting out, um, there is going to be a little bit of a learning curve with them. And uh, I'm not saying I've seen bad stuff about them, but I just haven't seen enough stuff about them to comment on them. Maybe I'll look into one. Maybe I'll try to get my hands on one of them. But um, I have six printers as it is, and I'm not really looking to replace any of these. We'll see. I'm sure somebody on my Discord probably has one. How easy is it to use the software and files and how to size something? By Paul Almond, AKA Peanut. Hi, Peanut. Um, I think it's easy, but that shouldn't be your basis. Um, I think Hura, the free program, whatever that's in the link, I think that is, um, 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 I think that is, uh, it's very easy to use. It's user friendly. They have kind of a user friendly mode on it when you first start learning to manipulate 3D parts. And I have videos specifically showing you how to manipulate 3D parts on that program. And hopefully explain enough of the features to you guys where you're not too scared jumping into it. Um, so I think it's pretty easy as you start to learn, as you, you can do these little one-off prints, you know, you can, you'll start printing very tiny things, one piece things, and then you'll make two piece things. Then you'll make, you'll start making things that, you know, lock together and fit together. And you're like, all right, cool. Let me make something bigger. So you work your way up. Typically when I see people have problems, it's because they'll get a printer, do a little test print, and then immediately try to start printing an Iron Man helmet. Don't do that. Work your way up because you're gonna have some problems. Um, and if you don't have problems, you're gonna have them eventually. So I'll have people message me on Instagram all the time and they'll be like, oh, hey, I'm having problems with my Ender 5 Plus, I bought it. Uh, it's not sticking or blah, 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 bed level, some, some type of problem. And then um, they'll, uh, I'll ask, hey, all right, so how'd your temp tower go? What have you printed? They're like, oh, I only printed a Benchy. And I'm like, you're, you only printed a Benchy and now you're trying to send a 20 hour print? Like, come on, man. Like, <laughs> Work up to it, and it'll, it'll save you so much more. It'll save you so much less headache. I promise. Um, might want to clarify that people need permission to sell files, so they don't just sell and print stuff on Thingiverse in order. I, I did. However, just to specify that again, if you are going to print and sell things to make money, there are licensing and laws you need to follow. Check in your area. Check always. Check with the model or the website where you download it from. Do your research because you don't want to start selling things you had no legal right to sell, and then get caught with your pants down. Bad juju. Don't do it. I talk way more about this in my previous live stream, so you guys can go and watch that. What materials do you use and how much does it cost? Oh, material question. That's a good question, actually. What time is it? 40? We're getting up to the, uh, the, the, the giveaway soon, so, all right, guys. So, everything you see in my room is printed in Sunlu, or uh, it doesn't really matter the brand, there's a couple brands, PLA Plus 3D printed plastic. It looks like this. It's a spool of plastic. This is one kilogram. This is one kilogram roll, roughly 2.2 pounds. This can print a lot of stuff. This can print not a lot of stuff. I can print two Iron Man helmets with one roll of this, and a roll of this costs anywhere between $12 of standard PLA 
and you can get all the way up to 30 and 40 dollars for all of this stuff it depends on the brand it depends on um, their own personal reputation uh, this stuff this mono price PLA plus this range is about 18 and 19 dollars a roll the Sunlu PLA plus that I use uh, that can be anywhere between 15 and 20 dollars a roll so you can print a lot out of this some more context it took 15 rolls of plastic to make my entire suit is that good is that bad that's about 230 to 250 dollars worth of plastic to make this entire Iron Man suit I think that's pretty good I, I don't know I thought that was pretty good um, that helmet took about half a roll, a little less. That shield took about a roll. This giant sword right here, this was about mm, one and a half rolls. Same with this one. Um, that shield took about a roll and a half. So you can kind of play around with how much material it uses. You can also adjust how strong and thick the plastic is. There is dead space inside the walls of this plastic. It's called infill. Now you can print things at 100% infill and make them solid plastic. You don't need to do that though. This is, whoo, don't cancel the stream. This is 5% infill. <laughs> it just ends the whole stream. Um, so this is a 5% infill. So it has a little bit of flex to it. It has a little bit of play in it. However, it's still strong. There's a, a, a solid pattern inside of it that helps keep it strong. This whole suit was printed at 10% infill. So if you kind of roughly go off of that math, if I printed this at 100% infill, I would have had to use probably double, if not more, the plastic that I used to actually make it. Um, P standard PLA plastic and PLA plus is it's non-toxic it's not gonna put out really bad fumes where you couldn't have it in a house where you couldn't have it like in a room um, now there's research on uh, micro plastic particulates you can go look into that I wouldn't maybe sleep in the same room as these even if it's PLA just over year, you know years and years of using it um, but you can have it in your house that's fine if you start printing weird things I believe like nylons definitely ABS I think nylons might be right but ABS plastic releases toxic fumes. You need a proper ventilated area for that or in a garage or something like that. Um, but if you're gonna start printing ABS, you're gonna have to do a lot more research. So that's, uh, that's something else. This is PETG, PETG plastic. This is much stronger than PLA. It's a little bit more difficult to print with though, but it has a higher thermal resistance. So you can leave this in like a hot car in the summer and it won't warp or melt. Um, where if you leave a PLA, a standard PLA helmet or prop, in a hot car in the middle of Texas in the middle of summer it could actually warp and uh, get deformed because it is softer plastic do 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 let's check the stream how much would you estimate your Iron Man suit is worth ooh that's uh, that's a rough one geeky Pete do you have a remote setup so you can check your printers remotely I do um, I actually have a whole video about that I utilize um, uh, 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 wise they're called wise cameras they're like 10 20 bucks and I have remote control. I can look at, uh, in my print room, I have two cameras set up in my print room. I can look at all my printers while they're going. And then I have Wi-Fi sockets hooked up to each individual printer. So if I see one printer kind of messing up, maybe the print fell over, it ran out of filament, whatever happened, I can actually turn the printer off and stop the print. So yes, I can I have remote control over my printers. And it, they, they are very easy to set up. How do you avoid stringing issues, printing or, uh, oh, how do you avoid sizing issues? That's another video. <laughs> I have a lot of tutorials on this stuff, guys. Um, quick synopsis when I printed this suit I printed it at a hundred percent scale it looks a little short right now because of the way the legs are I'm still working on that when I'm in this suit I'm actually like six foot tall because I have lifter shoes in it I wanted Iron Man to be the proper size I printed the whole suit at that hundred percent scale that was based off of the movie to avoid any weird sizing issues and not be Iron Man and, you know there's nothing wrong with fitting it to your body like at all I just didn't want to go that route so when I size things, I kind of just print them off at their original scale. Now helmets, what I'll do is I'll print a, I'll print a helmet off at 100% scale. I'll put it on and see how it fits. If I have room to play, I'll print the next one a little bit smaller because you can adjust the sizing in the program. You can adjust the scale of everything, which is really cool. Um, so to give you a little bit of an idea, this, uh, where is it? That helmet right here is 100% scale and you might be able to kind of see a little bit of the size difference. Maybe if you zoom in real close, I don't know. So this helmet is the same file as this one, 100% scale. This one is 96% scale. It's a little bit smaller and it hugs, it hugs my head a lot better. And then that one that's down here in this glass case that you guys can't definitely see, that is 94%. So you can definitely play around with the scale and uh, there's programs such as, um, it's called Armorsmith by the, uh, the Armored Garage. And it actually lets you scale and resize entire suits to your proportions. You, you measure your whole body and you plug them into the program 
and then you drop the armor files and you manipulate them around your 3D avatar and you get the sizing and scaling right. It's a really cool program, so go check that out. Maybe my mods can drop that in, uh, into the chat. Um, do, do, do. Let's see. Have you tried turning off the heated bed on the under five plus during printing? I recently just started doing it after mine about an hour into long prints and in love with the drop and the electric cost. Um, I have, t I turned economy mode off on all my printers. And if you guys don't know what that is, it means as your bed is hot, as your heated bed, um, as your printer starts to actually move and print, eventually what it does is it turns off that heated bed, uh, to save electricity. Um, but these don't use that much electricity to begin with. So I don't know, not a question, but you may want to bring up that fail failures happen and it's 100% okay. Um, circular or Delta. So failure, okay, I want to, I will point that out. Failures do happen. This is not a, this is not a perfect art. This is not something you're just going to jump into. I had failures while printing this suit. I, ha I still have failures. You're going to have print failures. There are things that are going to be out of your control. You won't know that the little tube that sits in the front of your printer is slowly working its way out, causing a little bit of a leakage. You're not going to know that this motor that controls your extruder is finally on its last leg. You're not gonna know these things. You're not gonna know you're gonna have a power outage. You're not gonna know that your cat's gonna jump on your printer and knock something off. Failures are gonna happen. What you do from that moment on is up to you. You can either get frustrated, throw things, post online, take your CR10 Max and smash it with a sledgehammer like a child, or you can figure out what went wrong. I'm going to say 98, 99% of print failures are user induced. You did something wrong. I did something wrong. I do stuff wrong all the time. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll put a print out too fast. I'll load the file up and get it sliced and get it on the printer without reviewing it properly. And then one of the supports fails and the print falls over. My fault. Don't, you, didn't, you didn't clean the bread, uh, bed properly. You didn't use isopropyl alcohol. My fault. You had a textured bed like this and you used a glue stick. Your fault. So you're gonna have mistakes. You're gonna have issues. You're going to, it will happen to you, I promise. You're gonna go, you're gonna have a roll of filament, you're gonna take it off, and you're gonna let it spring back like a spring. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna tangle the roll up. Ooh, see? You're gonna actually end up tangling the roll. And then what's gonna happen is the roll is gonna be tangled, but the printer's gonna keep printing. So what's gonna happen is the printer's trying to pull the plastic down, but it can't, it's tangled. The print's gonna finish, finish. The printer's gonna think it finished, but your roll will stop moving. Your fault. So things happen and you need to embrace them and you need to grow from them. If you didn't have issues, if I hadn't had all these failures, I don't think I'd have as many videos because I wouldn't be able to tell you guys like, oh, hey guys, I messed this thing up. Oh, hey, this broke. Oh, hey, I was painting this and it sucked, you know? These things are gonna happen and that's totally fine. Share your experience with it. That's why we have the Discord. I, people post fa print failures and issues all the time and somebody will be like, oh, that happened to me too. And then you figure it out. Oh, how'd you solve that? Oh, I did this. I did ABC. Oh, let me go check that out. So help each other troubleshoot. It's a really cool community and it only makes us all better. Please talk some more about the Sunlu S8. I couldn't get a feel on how you felt about it from your video. Hey, since it's not that video and I don't actually need to say anything good or bad about it, it's not bad for the price. However, after building it, after using it, it it didn't feel like it was gonna last as long as a CR-10S. Some of the parts definitely felt like they were gonna break very soon. Um, it worked, it worked great. It is a cheap printer, but the quality didn't feel there. Yeah. Um, so I feel like as you get it, as you use it, you're gonna start replacing things that are gonna start to add up and you're gonna be approaching the price of a CR-10S or an Artillery X1 anyway. Save up and get it. So, yeah. Mm-mm-mm. Ooh. Um, everyone has a different size head, so how to size a head? I talked about sizing. Um, might want to mention that people can download Cure and STL files. Already did that. Nylon and polycarbonate are the most toxic. The print ABS is not far behind. Nylon and polycarbonate. Thank you, Danny. Um, they are toxic, apparently. I didn't know that. I know ABS is. So uh, that's good. Um, Painter's Palace. Have you tried a 0.8 millimeter nozzle yet? No, I have not. So. Let me talk about quality and detail. That's actually a very good segue into this. Um, a lot of people ask about quality. Oh, I can't get good quality on my big printer. Should I get the small printer to print better quality? Yes and no. The, um, on each printer, this printer, that printer, that printer, 
there is a nozzle size with a nozzle diameter. This has a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Both of these printers have a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. And that's a bigger hole for filament to come out of. That means it can put out more plastic quicker. So as you upgrade your nozzle sizes, you can lay down more plastic. It actually increases the thickness of your print as well, making it a little bit stronger. And you can actually speed up how quickly you can print, which is absolutely great. Um, for instance, on the CR-10S, if I printed with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, I could have a print that would take 20 hours. Um, I think that used to be how long my Iron Man masks took. Just the faceplate, literally just the faceplate. Putting on a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, knock this down to 12 hours. Those are some of the changes you can see, but that's not linear. You can't, it's not a perfect like ratio. You have to play around with the program. Um, and a 0.8 millimeter nozzle is even bigger. I have not played with one yet. I do have one for my CR-10 Max. I have been thinking about putting that on. I was gonna have my enders be the 0.4 my fives and my tens be the uh, the sixes and then make my max a 0.8 just to see what kind of speed and size I can get out of it. Uh, to do right now currently, do you like that method more than Raspberry Octoprint? Um, yes, I do. I do like the setup I have more than the Octoprint and the, uh, the Raspberry Pi setups um, that link into the printer themselves because I constantly see people have problems with them. Now, if you haven't had a problem with them, you're obviously not in that pool of people who had problems with them. So it's less setup. It's, I, I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. Um, I can't start a print remotely, which isn't something I really care for anyway. So uh, I like that setup and it ended up only being like 50, $60. So I'm cool with that. Creality out of the box can only really do PLA and PEG. Might not, might be worth the mention, much more hobby level than engineering grade machines, which is why they are cheaper. Yes. So if you want to start printing more exotic materials, you don't want to use pet g you don't want to use pla you want to get into really advanced plastics you want to get into um, polycarbonates and you want to get into the carbon fibers and the abs and these really weird like stronger or special materials you are going to need to add upgrades um, out of the box the creality printers love pla and they can do pet g pretty well even though they say they can do abs there are some measures you need to do in order to get abs to work properly um, and but this is also why you're not spending four five six thousand dollars on a printer that is the same size as an Ender 3, but it can print these incredible materials. So there's a balance for that. Thank you, Danny. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, do they make noise? Ooh, Layla and Josh Sherwood. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Yes, they did. Yes, they don't. You can upgrade them and fix that. Every single one of these printers can be made quiet. Um, some come quiet. All three of these did not. So that's actually, uh, I wanted to get that off the table. Um, but we'll kind of, we'll kind of cycle back into that one. Um, yo, mods, you guys got to slow down on these questions, man. <laughs> I'm 22 behind. <laughs> um, let's see, we're getting, uh, six minutes and we'll talk about that giveaway. I'm parched. I need a drink. <laughs> yeah. So they can be noisy. Some people like the noise. Uh, the running consensus seems to be, and even I did, I liked the sound that they made, the whirring sound while they moved. I liked it for like two weeks and then it started to get annoying. So you can add um, new motherboards. And I have a tutorial coming out for adding a silent motherboard to this one. I have one for this one. I have one for this one. And I have another one coming out for another one. And it makes them damn near, I mean, silent. All you can hear is the cooling fans. And they're, it's, it's actually creepy. Um, so you can go check out some of those videos. Uh, there's tons of them all over the internet, not even just mine. Um, so you, yes, you can make them silent and it is, it is incredible the difference it makes. It's, it'd be like, hey, why don't you just include that anyway? But hey, who am I? I'm gonna have to skim through some of these questions, guys. Um, can you, I'm gonna fire off some answers here and then we'll get back to some of the differences because there's a couple more things I wanna talk about. The features and the making 3D printing easier for you. Can you print an Iron Man helmet in two pieces in the Creality Under 3? Uh, yes, but it wouldn't go together like an Iron Man helmet. Um, you can print it in five pieces though. You print the faceplate by itself, you print the jaw by itself, and then you take the dome and you cut it into, you can cut it like this into two sections and it'll fit in four pieces on your Ender 3. Um, can you reuse PLA support and reuse it somehow, like melt it down into PLA filament? Yes and no. There are um, big expensive machines you can buy to remelt wasted plastic. They are still in their developmental stage. The, uh, the cheapest one I found was $1,000. Usually you just recycle them. What I do for them though is when I 
take a helmet and I want to fuse these parts together, I'll take some wasted material and a soldering iron and I'll actually use it like welding material and weld the parts together. Guess what guys, I have a tutorial for that too. So you can actually utilize a lot of wasted materials to fix things and strengthen parts up. Reusing it into usable filament, there's machines you need for that. It's a little bit tricky. Um, but, but, but how many printers do you fit? Uh, okay, how long does someone need to be working with a 3D printer to call themselves anything but a novice? <laughs> uh, Clay Tamor, forever. I still call myself a novice because at any point, one of these can do something that I just don't know how to fix. Um, somebody can give me a 3D file that I've never tried to, I have never printed a Mandalorian helmet. I, have, I don't know how to do it. So I would need to get that file, examine it, I can try to start printing it and it could all go belly up. I could be awful at it. So, uh, I don't know, that's a tricky question. Um, some people could call me a novice. I've only been printing for a year and a half. Some people call me a professional. I don't agree with that. It's, that's a, wow, no one's ever asked that one. You got me there. You, wow, we might, that might, that might be a conversation for a whole other live stream. Uh -huh. um, Vanilla Wombat, is there, is it worth buying the Max for the extra money over the CR-10S V2? Have an under three now. I'm 22 behind. You're six behind. Okay, so it said 22 notifications. Shut up, Chris. <laughs> uh, what do you think of the Micro Swiss all metal hot ends? I see such mixed things about the all metal hot ends. I see people put them on and never have a problem. And I'll see people put the all metal hot ends on and they'll be like, oh, my stringing is insane now. I don't know why I did that. I can't, I haven't researched them enough. Um, I'm a big proponent. If it's not broke, don't fix it. None of these are broke. They work fine. I'm not gonna start throwing upgrades at them that they're, they're fine. Um, I call them vanity upgrades. Uh, maybe it might improve quality, but they still, they print just perfectly fine for me. I'm not gonna start messing with things. Um, the only reason I added the silent boards was to make them quiet. I wanted them to be a little bit quieter and oh, they are. Um, and then I wanted to come back. How do you use, a, uh, how do you use all leftover filament using Renat Center? How do you, yes, so I do math. Um, I do a lot of math with all of that. I, uh, I'll have like a roll, I get a little scale, like a little digital food scale. And what you do is you weigh an empty roll and then you, ta you use that value to tar out the scale so it becomes zero. These rolls weigh 133 grams, mo the mono price uh, rolls. You put that on the scale, it'll tell you exactly how much filament you have left. And then I'll write it out Sharpie, 300 grams, 200 grams. And then I'll kind of keep that in mind, like okay, I can send a print with just that leftover or I can let my runout sensor um, kick in and then swap in a new roll. Sometimes runout sensors don't always catch. I've had it happen before where the very end of the roll that you can sometimes see if you look through the hole, it, was, it got curled and it actually got wrapped around the outside of the runout sensor and it, it just, it wouldn't come through. So the print finished, it ghost printed. So the printer thought it had filament. The same way as your, that your spool gets caught, it finished the print, but it didn't make it through the runout sensor. So. That kind of sucked. Um, but yeah, runout sensors are, I'm actually about to add a runout sensor to my Ender 3. Um, okay, I had, there was a question about the Max. We're gonna get to that. Mm -mm -mm. Metal hot ends work great for not PLA filaments usually and allow for exotics to be printed at high temps. Can require more fine tuning for PLA. Okay, so that's, I think, that's why I see that. People do all metal hot ends, but they continue to print um, PLA and softer plastics, which just causes all sorts of problems. Um, so, yeah, it's nine o'clock. So guys, you made it to nine o'clock and I wanted to talk about this giveaway real quick. We're gonna spend five minutes talking about this. Um, so please stop asking questions for just a few minutes or else my mods are gonna back me up heavily. Um, <laughs> check, <laughs> I like that. I like how you guys are coordinating this. Um, thank you again, mods, for handling that because I'd be straining my eyes so bad right now because I got light, light, light the screen and like I can just like, uh. <laughs> um, so, a lot of you guys know about Thingiverse.com. Um, it is a free hosting website for 3D models. There is another, uh, Thangs.com. They are an up and coming website and they have actually contacted me because they want to sponsor a giveaway. We are giving away a brand new Creality CR-10S. This printer, not like this printer, this one's mine, you can't have it. But you can have like this printer. So they're sponsoring a giveaway for me, which is awesome. I am so happy. Um, originally we were gonna do an Ender 3, but we're like, I'm like, this is, this is kind of like a cosplay channel. Um, you know, like we print big stuff, like, like small stuff's cool, but we want big stuff. So Creality CR-10 S, the S is important, has an extra uh, Z motor, it's good. 
So they're giving one of they're uh, going to be giving one of these away to one lucky winner, and I am super excited about it. And I yeah 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 yeah. The contest is not going to be run on YouTube. I am only announcing it here because YouTube's contest rules are whack, and I don't want to deal with them. Um, so it's going to be hosted on Instagram and TikTok. The one on TikTok is already live, so you can go look at that video, share it, enter, do all that stuff. The one on Instagram will be put up tomorrow um, because I, it's just going to be late, and I'll, it'll be up tomorrow. To enter the contest, though, it's, it's to get your creative uh, juices flowing. And I might enter it, kind of. It's, it's weird. What I need you guys to do is you're going to go um, Windows 3D Modeler, Tinkercad, Blender, Maya, Fusion 360. If you want to pay for ZBrush, go for it. Design your own 3D model that has to do with superheroes or supervillains. It can be from Marvel, DC, Dragon Ball Z. It can be uh, somebody asked about Star Wars. Yeah. Go for it. If it's a lightsaber, that could be, you know, it could be a Jedi, it could be a Sith. Um, no gray Jedi lightsabers, because I wouldn't know where to put those. So you're gonna design a 3D model and you're gonna upload it to fangs.com because they are trying to be a very reliable 3D modeling resource. It's a completely free website. So you can go there, upload your own model, and you can download, just like Thingiverse, any other model you want. So do that. Upload your model. When you upload it, make sure you put my hashtag. It'll be hashtag frankly built, you know, the channel. Or else we won't be able to track that you uploaded it for the contest. And we're, and, um, myself and the owners of things.com are actually gonna pick out our favorite. And I think that's fair. If we're giving away a printer, we kind of get to decide who we give it to. Now, complex and more doesn't always equal better. So if you have a really cool model that we like, it could be something simple. Or you can get really crazy, design something extravagant and wonderful and upload it. You can upload as many files as you want. You can upload them as many times as you know. You can modify it, remix it, upload them. So go enter. The contest is open. Um, you have until December 4th. So you have plenty of time to model your own stuff. If you want to model something every day and upload it, go for it. That's it, totally within your rights. Just make sure you hashtag frankly built or else I won't know that it's you. Okay. And then December 6th live stream, which is in two weeks, I believe. We're going to be announcing the winner. Um, I may, depending on the complexity of said print, I might be able to actually print off the winning part. Um, so if, if you really split it into pieces, this way I can just like use all six printers, pump it out. And then I can like, Hey, this, you know, I can show you on the live stream. This is who won. That'd be kind of cool. I think. So go do that now. Maybe, maybe you don't know how to 3d model. I don't know how to 3d model. I was going to try and just upload something and just see what it looks like. If you don't know how to 3D model, Emily the Engineer on TikTok and Instagram, you might have seen her, she also makes Iron Man suits. She is running a very similar giveaway with things.com. However, you don't need to have 3D model to enter hers. You need the 3D print to enter hers. So if you already have a 3D printer, you're gonna go to Fangs, download a file, 3D print it, and make a TikTok about that 3D printed file, and you're gonna tag her in Fangs. So you, can, you have two chances to enter here. You can 3D model or you can 3D print. You can do both. I highly doubt you're gonna win both. Wouldn't that be funny though? It'd be amazing. You end up with two, three 3D printers and all you had to do was print and not. So if you don't have a 3D printer and you want one, you can enter my contest. If you have a 3D printer and you want a new one, you can enter Emily's contest. So best of both worlds. There are three free 3D modeling programs you can download. Um, Blender, I believe is free. You can use like Windows 3D Builder. So hop on Google, find some free modeling programs and just start designing stuff and, and you know, get your feet wet with it. So that's all I'm gonna say about that. Thank you again, things.com for sponsoring this because it's really cool. It's, it's, it's this. It's this printer. I use this printer to make this suit. Like, this was my first printer. This could, this could be yours. This could all be yours. But you're still here, which is good because I appreciate you guys also coming to the live stream. Don't start now. Wait till the, after the live stream. It's going to go for another hour. Upload a model of things, then print your own model. You never know. You're, you're right. You know what? You might have just found that loophole, Chris. Upload it. Hey, this model's on things.com. I downloaded it and printed it. You're not wrong. You could do that. Um, don't do that. <laughs> I, I don't want to have to add that rule. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Um, let's see. We are making, wow, five. I said five minutes. I was five minutes. I like that. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Joanna. Thank you, things.com for doing that. Um, hopefully, we can work together more in the future because hopefully this... Hopefully you guys make this contest a roaring success. I'm talking about the, the viewers. Like, they already did their part. They're giving you a printer. You guys are greedy. Rude. Greedy, greedy, greedy. Back to the printers. Cool. 
So, I, I, I get this. I get the sense that a lot of people joined after. You know, a lot of people uh, joined up after I did the whole intro about if you're going to make something smaller than a helmet, an Ender Three. If you want to get into cosplay, the Creality CR Ten S or above. So that's the CR10S, 300 by 300 by 400. The Artillery Side Wander X1, same build volume. The, uh, the Tivo Tarantula, I believe, is the same volume. The Sunlu S8, same volume. That's the side build plate size you wanna get, you go for. You'll notice here, because I'm just such an awesome person who does awesome things for you guys. Put that there. Hopefully, 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 hopefully you can see these. Okay, okay, you can. So, hi. These are the three different build plates for the three different printers that are on my desk right now. This small one is the Ender 3. The second layer right here, this is the CR-10S. This big, the, the largest one is the Ender 5 Plus. So you can see that the size just between the Ender 5 Plus and the Ender 3 is pretty significant. So you'll be able to fit a lot more on this. Like, you can fit a lot more. It's kind of cool. Now, I want to talk about the features. Why is the CR-10S V2 better than the CR-10S? Why is the Ender 5 Plus better than the Ender 5 Pro? What features do these printers have as you go up in price? Your Ender 3 is going to have nothing. It's going to print and that's it. As you move up one tier, typically, to like the Pro, you're going to start getting metal components, a metal extruder. You're going to get a better uh, Bowden tube. Then you're gonna start getting the things like filament runout sensors. You're gonna start getting the things like silent main boards, um, better reinforcement, bigger build volumes. Then you're gonna get into something really cool, a BL touch, an auto leveling sensor. Now one of the banes of people's existence is leveling your 3D printer. And I don't mean leveling it to the ground, it's called trimming or squaring. You're getting this gantry level with your bed. So as the nozzle moves from left to right, it's the same distance. If that bed is tilted, it's not gonna print properly. That's when people say leveling their bed, that's what they're talking about. Now they make sensors to help you out with this and actually make your life easier where it actually measures the bed for you and it factors that in. As it prints, it moves into in such an orientation where it helps print better. You're gonna pay for these features though. As you add more features, the printers go up in price. It's weird how that works, right? So I've already talked about the Ender, Ender 3 Pro, Ender 3 V2, cool. At the very basis, if you wanted something bigger than an Ender 3, start with a Creality CR-10S. The normal CR-10 is kind of dated. The CR-10S gives you everything you need with its size, and then you're gonna throw a couple upgrades at it. You're gonna throw an all-metal extruder and a Bowden Capricorn tube at it. That's really all you're gonna need. You might wanna swap out. I personally hate these glass beds. I can't get them to work. There's options though. You can get a magnetic flexible bed that pops right on and off. I actually have one right here on my Ender. Or you can get a glass ultra base bed. This has like a microporous textured surface on it that helps print stick beautifully. Both of my Enders have it, both of my CR-10S's have it, and one of my Ender 3's have it. This bed is incredible. But you go up even more in tiers. There's the V2 version, which fixed a couple problems from the original CR-10S. It has a, a, a brace, it has a new hot end. They upgraded a couple things. Is one better than the other? I don't particularly think so. It depends on how much money you want to spend. But if you really want to spend some money, woo, woo hoo, hoo. Oh, why did I put that there? Oh, God. This is the new addition to the family. Wow. This is the Reality CR-10S Pro V2. This is an all-in-one printer. It doesn't have the control box. It comes with a metal extruder, a Capricorn tube, a silent board, a touch screen, a reinforced frame, a BL touch, a runout sensor. Every little upgrade I just mentioned is on this printer. There's, I, there's no upgrades to do on this thing. You buy it, you build it, it prints. This is the closest you're gonna get. I have like a, I have like, a uh, like a hiccup, like stuck halfway. This is like the closest you're gonna get to an out of box, ready to go 3D printer at your kind of hobby level for this size. Um, this range is anywhere from $600 to $700, depending on where you're looking. $160, $300 to $450, eh, $300 is a little low, about $400. $500 to $600, about 
but the pro versions eliminate that learning curve. You're, to build this, it's four bolts. You open it up, you stand the gantry up, you put four bolts in, you plug in this one connector right here. Oh, sorry, here. Two connectors right here, boom, boom. Four bolts, two connectors. Plug it in and start calibrating and testing and printing with it. That's it. So you get what you pay for as you add these features. So it's really how much money you want to spend. These printers are the same build size. They are, the, these will print the same thing. Theoretically though, this one will do it better. Um, it has just a lot more of those features. I just got this thing. I've only done one print on this thing. I'm excited for it. If you guys know what the CR10 Max is, this is a smaller CR10 Max or the CR10 Max is a bigger Pro V2. They are the exact same printer. This the CR10 Max is much bigger. I'm gonna put this back on the floor because I'm out of room. Ho, ho. Some of you eagle-eyed viewers. This is the build plate on a CR10 Max. This is the build plate on an Ender 3. Here, let me flip it over so you can actually see the reflection. I can fit four of these build plates on my CR10 Max. I can fit my entire Ender 3 inside the build volume of my CR10 Max. Look at this thing. This is the build plate, it's gigantic. Is this better than a CR10 S5? Yes. I will say that right now, 100% yes. The CR10 S5 is a CR10 S with a bigger bed. That's all they did to it. They didn't upgrade the power supply. They didn't add extra belts. They didn't add, add uh, bed leveling. They used the same heating pad. It doesn't heat up, the, the build plate doesn't heat up properly and it's basically always warped. It's slow. The amount of money you're gonna typically pour into a CR10 S5 is gonna start approaching what the CR10 Max would have cost. Now, the difference, the CR10 S5 is 50 millimeters bigger, 50, that's it. This is 450 by 450, uh, S5 is 500 by 500. And the build, the build height is 500 on the CR10S and 470 on the max. So you're losing 50 by 50 by 30. You're never gonna notice that, I promise you. What can you print on this giant printer? I'm gonna print an entire chest plate in one shot. And I didn't even come close to maxing out this thing's build size. Here's another chest plate. That's a little bit bigger. I didn't print this on my Max because support and cost material, but I could have. This is a jetpack for Starboost. It fits. I could have printed this exactly like that, standing up. This entire jetpack, which would have taken over 30 prints on this Ender. Trust me, I tried. It's a bigger printer. Now, I would never, ever, 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 and some of my mods can attest to this, I would never suggest this, I would never suggest this CR10 Max as your first printer. Yes, it is like the Pro, out of box, you can use it. It has a learning curve. It is a very large printer. It's slower than people think. This, this is a lot of bed to move around and it's, uh, it takes up a large footprint. You need 43 inches depth on your desk to even fit it because this bed is moving. This giant bed is moving in and out constantly. You need a lot of room for it. It can be a little temperamental. Um, I have a review on the CR10 Max and I still stand what I said in that video. I, it, is, it is your second printer, it's not your first. Get an Ender 3 first. Get a CR10S first. See how you like the hobby, start printing. Understand how to level your bed. Understand how to do the little maintenance things. Understand those parameters and those concepts. Then get a CR10 Max. You will love it. Don't get it as your first printer. You will hate it. I'm gonna check the chat, okay? All right, uh, boo, 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 boo. What do you think about the Anycubic Chiron? Cryon? I don't even know how to say it. I think it, I don't know if it's spelled wrong. Um, what do you think about the Anycubic? I've heard very mixed things in the community about it. Um, actually, I think one of my mods had it and he felt like he was duped into it because um, some other person, YouTuber, had suggested it, but it just it had nothing but problems for him. Now, I've seen people have good um, experience with it. It's a cheap, bigger printer. Um, again, research, review videos. I haven't done too much research on the Anycubic, so I can't really comment on them specifically. Um, 
The S5 is the printer that Danny has. Yes, it is. And he can, uh, he can talk a little bit about that <laughs> in the chat if he wants. Um, yeah, uh, I can't comment too much on Anycubic. Um, I landed on Creality and they've been doing good for me. Maybe if I had started with a Anycubic, I, these would all be Anycubic printers. Who knows? I haven't heard particularly bad things about them. Anything I've heard about Anycubic, I've heard about Creality. You know, like, oh, I can't get it to level. This broke, that broke. I've heard all the same things. Um, it's not like an, an Annet A8 where all you hear is bad things, you know, or like, oh my God, this is a bad printer. So, um, I had to step away just when you mentioned tangled filament. Is there a good way to untangle filament on the spool? Get an empty spool, get a friend, and start rolling it up, man. <laughs> it sucks. Um, I mentioned how not every machine needs the same upgrades. IE Ender doesn't need to be uh, uh, easy. Oh, yes. Thank you, Dan. God, I need to... I, you, yeah, thank you. So I was talking about that auto leveling feature, right? This is a big printer. I couldn't even begin to imagine manually leveling my CR10 Max. No, hard pass. Godspeed to anybody who has manually leveled your CR10 S5. Um, yeah, no. But look how tiny this bed is. Look at this, look, look at this. I have dinner plates bigger than this thing. You don't need, a a BL Touch, one of those auto level sensors on your Ender 3. This is, this is very easy to level. This is a joke to level. I have a video where I level it in about 45 seconds with a sticky note. Literally, a sticky note. This is all you need to level your bed. Cool, awesome. So not, not all of them need the same upgrades. Um, there's the flight till failure issues. Your plastic extruder is going to break eventually. Your, boat, your, stock, cap, your stock Bowden tube is probably gonna fail eventually. There's only two upgrades I recommend to people. It's the metal extruder and the Capricorn tube. Everything else is optional to make your life easier. Some people have great luck with the, the clear glass beds. I didn't. I have magnetic beds and ultra bases and these weird textured fiberglass beds. I like them. So you don't need all the same upgrades for everything. Um, again, if your printer is sitting out in your garage, you don't need a silent board. Who cares? You don't hear it, whatever. Maybe you just really love the mechanical sound of it. Maybe you live downstairs from a rock band and you can't hear yourself think anyway. Who cares? Do, do, do. Ah, which printers can use harder plastics and materials for armor or are those toxic? Typically, those really strong ones are, uh, are toxic. Have you thought about the enclosures for your printers, especially for bigger parts? Um, I don't need enclosures. I print in PLA and PLA Plus. Don't need any enclosures. Hi, you said in one of your chats, printed Iron Man helmets upside down. Do you use supports or wrapped? I use both. You need to use both. Um, use just a, it looks like a top knot. It literally just looks like a top knot sitting right there on the head. And I'll flip this over for you. So you can see a little bit of crud right here. And I print the helmet sitting just like that with supports and a very tiny raft. Not the biggest raft, I think it's like a 0.5 millimeter um, raft and uh, that's it. Yeah, I, I don't need to use a raft all the time, but I use rafts for a lot of stuff. I, I, I use them to weld parts together. So I pretty much always print with a raft and it just adds security. So I don't think I'm ever gonna stop using a raft. Fight me. <laughs> Cool, cool, cool. Um, doo -doo -doo. Hey, did you try the th the refill rolls? I haven't needed to yet. I want to. I haven't gone through all my ESUN yet, so I will let you know. There will be a, a follow-up to that one. Does the color of the filament make the difference? What temperature should I set? Yes, um, the, te the color of the filament can make a difference. Some Typically, if you're printing in white versus black, sometimes you need to print black just a little bit hotter. Um, sometimes you don't. It really depends on the printer. Uh, I know people who will run 240 for pet G on their and Creality's, their Creality printers, but they'll use like 260 on their uh, artillery. Like it's weird. It's weird how you have to play around with it. Temperature tower, temperature tower, temperature tower, temperature tower. How is that battery already dying? How do we have to, huh, whatever. Um, cool, we caught up on all those. Um, do, 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 do. <laughs> Um, cool, we got some big ones in there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, sorry guys, I'm gonna skim the chat real quick. I have an under five plus in the silent board upgrade. The fan still makes some noise, but it's crazy. Dude, it's insane how quiet it is, isn't it? Wow. Um, hey, I'm back, how's it hanging? Yeah, would you say get these different printers if you have the money, but you use, as you said, from the starter to pro, basically you can get the printers. Mm -mm -mm -mm. That's a good question, actually. I like that. Would I get the same printers right now? 
If the Ender 5 Plus existed when I started that suit, it didn't. I would have bought an Ender 5 Plus instead of the CR-10S. However, this is roughly 600, almost, about $600. I still love my CR-10S. This thing is a monster. Uh, it is quiet. Uh, I've only put about $100 worth of upgrades into it. Um, I paid $450 when it, back when it was, uh, yeah, about $450 I think I got it for. And uh, it's tough, man. They're about the same price. The upgrades you put on this bring this up in price, obviously. Would I get a pro over these? If you could afford it, if you were really like, I, I, you know, I don't want to upgrade, I don't want to mess with upgrades, I just want an out-of-box thing that works, you're still going to need to learn how to use it. It's not going to work perfect. Don't start. Get the pro. Um, if you can afford it and you just don't want to mess with upgrades, you just want the printer to go, the pro, um, you can get a CR-10S Pro and swap out the, the it's an easy able um, magnetic induction sensor it's a little finicky swap it out for an actual bl touch that like these ones have um and it's an awesome printer uh but if it was me i wouldn't get the pro i'd get an ender 5 plus i get an ender 5 plus throw on an all metal extruder a capricorn tube and a silent board and you're still cheaper than the pro v2 and you're bigger you're more stable and you can print way faster and honestly, this kind of printer looks kind of cooler, I think. That's just me. Uh, they both have touch screens. That's not negligible. Whatever. Whatever. Yeah. Um, doo -doo -doo. I've heard good things about the Ender 3. You will hear some better things. It's amazing. Buy one. Uh, my silent board for my 5 Plus is coming tomorrow. I can't wait. It's too loud to leave running overnight. Adam Green, I believe that. Uh, I want to do armor and suits, but I don't want to just jump in. I want to learn, but I don't want to see, oh, the gold printer I want sold out while I was looking. I'm sorry, Robert. <laughs> um, doo -doo -doo. Trust man, the silent board. Yeah, the silent board is amazing. CR10 for sure. If you start smaller like the Ender and you like it, you'll want to go bigger. I upgraded my Ender 3 with the main board from Big Jack and made it silent. Yes, you did. Um, what metal extruder do you have on your Ender 5 Plus? I have all the same weird Amazon all metal extruders. They're, they're red. Just search Creality Metal Extruder or CR10 Metal Extruder and it, it, they, it's all the same one. This one, that one, that one, the ones that are all on my other printers, they're the same extruder kit. You can get them in a kit with um, your metal extruder, your Capricorn tube, upgraded bed springs for like 15 bucks get it why why wouldn't you why wouldn't you are there any suggestions that you have for enhancements that should be added to the ender 3 pro um the ender 3 pro comes with a magnetic bed i believe a stock uh does if it does not come with a metal extruder and a capricorn tube get them if it does not if it does don't worry about it and then that, that's it i really want to add anything to it um hey dude what's up gunner what are the differences between the cr10 and the cr10s the cr10s has dual z um dual z motors so what i mean by that is it has a second motor uh so your your gantry actually goes up and down evenly and doesn't droop there is another difference i do not remember what it is though don't get the normal cr10 just save up for the 10s just that's it. it it's only like 20 or it's only like 50 bucks more sorry um what did you print the cap shield on so that captain america shield was printed in four pieces two on my ender 5 pluses two on my cr10 maxes or CR-10 S's. That Captain America shield, this was actually printed in two pieces, and it, there was a seat, it was cut right here. I actually hit it with the leather. This was printed in two pieces on my CR-10 Max. Two, sh two parts, one, two, not bad. Stay, good boy, stay. <laughs> Stop straining your eyes. We'll put the questions in the chat. <laughs> That's fine. I'll wait. I'll wait for you guys. I'll wait for you guys. Wait. Yeah. Um, I hope you guys are having a fantastic uh, Sunday night. Um. <laughs> Can I just interject? Um, thank you. Thank you, everybody. This is like cool. I started with this printer a year and a half ago, like right there, right there. And I started making my suit roughly a little, little more than a year ago, a little more than, yeah. In like 
what happened? <laughs> I was a, I was a car guy. This was a car channel. My Instagram was for cars. Um, and now it's just like this wild thing that's just literally changed my life. So thank you. I'll say that live. I said it in a lot of videos, but like, I don't know. Thank you. This is so, there's probably kids watching, so I won't say any bad words. Cool. Insert, insert foul language, please. Um, this is like amazing and I, I love it. Um, yeah. And if you're watching, hi LT. <laughs> oh God. Uh, yep. 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 Stream health is great. I'm much, I'm much closer to the screen now, so I can actually read some of it. How long was each part for the World War II cat shield? Um, any re hold on. Any reason to not use the Titan over the bonus shooter? Ooh, let's talk about direct drive. Oh, the Titan. Sorry, the Titan's not direct drive. Uh, I haven't needed to use it. It's just more money that I don't think would add anything because I don't have problems with my Bowden tubes, so whatever. If it works for you, cool. Check it out. Where did you buy your CR-10S? Amazon, US. Frank, any reason I uh, got that one? How long was each part for the World, um, the World War II shield? That shield, I believe each part was a day and a half because on my Macs, I had to print it at a really weird angle and I didn't want it to wobble back and forth, so I went super slow. If I had cut it into four pieces though, it would have printed way faster. And I didn't use any supports for it, which was pretty cool. It's, it's a flat plate. Um, what paints do you use for your props? Um, also, how do you give them a shine and do you have any suggestions on how to remove hide seams? Um, I use spray paint on damn near everything. Um, I clear coat them and then I use automotive grade polish, wax, and resin. Literally, I, I, I literally took car wax and buffed my suit. It needs a shine, it's getting a little dull. How do you hide seams? Um, PLA welding and sanding, man, and then wood filler. Wood filller is your dream, stop using Mondo. Um, have you had any problems with the ESUM PLA? It always clogs Lander 5 Plus. Run hotter. Um, Maeve, Maeve, oh Maeve, thank you dude. You are the reason why I started my Mark 7. No, thank you. Stop it, stop all that. I, uh, do you ever test those fire extinguisher balls? Uh, Adam Green, in the next week or so I'm going to. On Annette, my Annette A8 is about to not have a good day. Not that it would ever have a good day. Um, do you only do big cosplay type stuff or have you dabbed in any kind of miniatures yet? Only ask as it's a whole new learning opportunity regardless of printer capabilities. P Painter's Palace. Somebody did ask me that actually. They did ask me um, printing small, you know. Uh, they want to print tiny things, you know, little guys. They want to print miniatures and figures. They want to print um, Warhammer stuff and Warhammer uh, um, diorama pieces, not diorama, but field pieces and stuff like that. Uh, get an Ender 3 and put on like a 0.2 millimeter nozzle. Go down a size and you will be sickened with the quality that you can get out of um, an, an Ender 3 and a very tiny nozzle. As long as all your eccentric nuts are tight and your bed's level and proper, it is incredible the quality you can get out of uh, an Ender 3. Um, you can get the same quality out of a CR-10S. It's just, it takes a lot more fine tuning to make sure everything's square and level. Um, I've thought about it. I've thought about uh, doing that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really, I, I got like Gundam models and stuff and I got like, I did think about, there were some cool Dragon Ball Z um, figures, um, big dioramas, but like super fine detail. I thought about pumping some of those off of my Ender. I don't know. I, I'm not out of content yet though. Maybe if I run out of content, we'll look into that. <laughs> um, is it possible to add a filament runout sensor on the Ender 5 Plus? It has a filament runout sensor. It has one. Hmm. Uh, my Ender 3 used to work perfectly. Now I'm having issues with under extrusion and gaps between layers. I'm printing 215 for the Honda and 65 for the bed. What can I do to get my Ender 5 working again? Um, if you haven't upgraded your Bowden tube, upgrade your Bowden tube and make sure the metal gear, that gold gear on your extruder that spins and pushes the filament, make sure that's not worn down. That'll cause under extrusion every time. Uh, I just subbed hit the notification bell. Thanks. If you haven't subscribed, please do. It helps the channel out. And got, oh, we are almost at 20,000. Oh my God. Oh my God, will this put us over 20,000? Oh my God. No. We're 149 away from 20,000 subscribers. That's it, 149. Um, so if anybody's watching and you haven't subscribed, could, could you? That'd be, that'd be super cool. <laughs> oh my God. Like we're, like, we're almost at 20,000 in a year. Ah, I'm freaking out. Oh, like I could go to bed and wake up with 20. Oh, oh thank you. Oh boy. 
Oh boy. Um, Wyatt Earp. Uh, Yet Earp, as I call him. 130 viewers. How many of you aren't subscribed? Hmm. <laughs> Have you ever thought about using two pack paint through a compressor? Yes. Because I move around, because I'm in the military, because we leave this country in six months. Oh God, that is painful to say. We are leaving soon. Um, I already have a lot of equipment. I already probably gonna need to get rid of a lot of the stuff if we end up back in Japan. But um, when we, I already have a lot to pack up and I'm limited on space to now add a compressor system for professional painting, like uh, what H HVP or uh, the high volume paint systems. Um, that's more equipment, more stuff to pack up. And then I can't bring that paint with me. So all the spray paint I have, I can't ship that. I'm gonna have to use all that spray paint up before I move or sell it. So if I start getting these really expensive, nice paints that use an HVP gun, um, I'm gonna have to get rid of it. So I don't wanna, until I have a nice steady spot, um, wherever we end up next, we could be there for four years. Maybe I'll get that immediately and start playing around with it. But right now it just wouldn't be feasible for me to get it. Um, it's on the list though. Um, 20K giveaway. Hey, how about we call this uh, CR10S giveaway the 20K giveaway? Because by the time the giveaway is over, I'll probably be at 20K. That sounds good. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> um, so the Ender 3 for small detail prints, but big armor print. Um, Rob D. Nerd, yeah. Um, let's surmise everything that happened here, okay? For people watching. You wanna get into 3D printing and you don't know what 3D printer to get. If you are going to be printing things, again, smaller than a helmet. If a helmet is the biggest thing, you're like, maybe one day I'll make a Stormtrooper helmet. Maybe, but I want I wanna make small things. Creality Ender 3, maybe the Ender 3 Pro if you want to pay a little bit more, but the Creality Ender 3 and some upgrades. I have videos on those upgrades and why, not just upgrading them. I don't like doing that. I don't like just, hey, I upgraded my Ender. Have fun. No, in each upgrade video, I tell you why I'm upgrading it. I don't throw useless upgrades at you, I promise you guys. And if it, I think it's a useless upgrade and I'm doing it anyway, I'll tell you. My CR-10S used to have the Z braces. Guess what it doesn't have anymore because it didn't make a difference. Weird. Ender 3. You want to print bigger than a helmet? You want to make big stuff like this? Sword, shields, props, everything, whatever. You want a 3D printer, 3D printer. It's not, it's pointless now. Creality CR-10S or better. CR-10S V2, CR-10S Pro. Um, stay away from the S4s and S5s. Save up for a max. If you have an S4 and S5 and it works good for you, that's good. I've just seen way, I, I'm probably in more places than you. I am on every damn Facebook group. Uh, between bo the both discords, YouTube, I see a, probably a lot more uh, um, places than some of you guys see. Um, and I have a lot more people messaging me than, you know, I have people messaging me about their S4s and S5s and the upgrades and the BL touches and the power sources and the power supplies and the heated beds and the, oh my God, get a max. So yeah, literally it would be like get an under three and then like, all right, cool. I like the hobby. I want to get bigger stuff then start looking into the CR-10S and the Ender 5 Plus. Um, and then there, again, there are other brands out there. Look into the Artillery Sidewinder X1s. I think they're V5 or V4, V5 versions out. Um, there's the Sunlu S8, eh, get the 10S. Um, and bigger doesn't mean better. It just means bigger. Bigger means bigger. This can print big things-ish. This can print bigger, this can print bigger, but they can all do the same quality. It's just, you'll have to print this helmet in more parts on this or one part on this. That's all that's gonna change. It's how much you need to cut this thing up. Let me take, let me take, let me take, let me take this guy out. Let me take, let me take a, look, look. Look at this. This was 3D printed, this entire sword. In one, two, three, four, five, six sections on my CR-10S. You could print this on an Ender 3. It would just take, you would just have to print more parts. That's it, that's it. And then you fuse them together, you paint it, you sand it, you do all this fun stuff. But that's part of finishing and that's not really what this video is about. Ah, oh, I forgot I actually brought this in here. Hold on. This is my Stormbreaker. This is a freshly printed Stormbreaker and you can see by the colors, the different parts that are built into it. There's one part, two, three, four, five, six, and there was a filament, this is a color change. This is still one part, this is seven. This is seven parts. So this also can be printed on an Ender 3. I would just need to cut this in half in the 3D file, the 3D program. This fits on an Ender 3. 
this needs to be cut. You have to cut like the blades off. So you can print things like Stormbreaker on a tiny printer, but this can be printed in one shot on the CR-10S. And for funsies, I'm gonna pull back out the Blade of Chaos because this thing's just really cool looking. hi -ya. And that will battle damage it anyway. Um, let me check the chat one last time. Ooh, I missed a lot of those questions. Um, I, in Civil War, we're Cap, Cap, Team Cap Camera. I like Iron Man more, but I see myself side of a cat. <laughs> Owen Frost, I'm already ready. I'm almost ready to paint my Mark 85 helmet. Which color shades are your favorite? I know you've said it before. It's metallic paints, man. You got to find out what's, whatever's at your store. Uh, 20K backflip. No, I already owe you guys a... Uh, a uh, hundred or uh, thousands. Oh God, what was the back before? A thousand on the Discord? Have another sub fella. This is great content. I'm sending the E3 V2 to make terrain for the 40K and small. Don't get the V2, get the standard uh, Ender 3 and then add upgrades. It'll print better than the V2. That is for Rugland. Rugland? Rugland. Also remember every one of these printers are capable of printing at the near same quality. If you want, you can do tiny prints on a Max and have the same quality. Yes, you can. Thanks for serving, by the way. You got it. Thanks for your tax money. <laughs> I, just, I just started after 24 years. I feel you're moving pains, brother. Um, I've had to throw away stuff and I cried about it. Yeah. 20K, it's got to be a backflip from a gen now. Um, do, do, do. William Crowell. 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 My under three shows default temperatures as negative 14. It's giving me an error in mini temp. Please reset message. I recently replaced the hot end. What should I do? That sounds like your main board might be messing up. Oddly specific question for the stream. Yeah, it's very specific. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, what time is it? 9.40. Okay, so I hope that was a good summation. Um, I think might now that now might be a okay time to open up the floor to a little bit more generalized questions that still are about the printers. Finishing your props comes after. Um, well, we've had people on the Discord ask about how do, how do you motorize and paint your Iron Man helmet? And they haven't even got their printer yet to print the helmet. Take it in baby steps, start printing, and then you're, gonna, you're probably gonna have some failed prints. Use them to practice on. Make your first helmet, practice on it, paint it. I, this Keyblade is terrible. This Keyblade is hot garbage. I could sit here for two hours and rip this thing apart. The seams, the, just, this thing's bad. That's why I printed a new one. There's a, um, a video that's gonna be coming out. I'm gonna make a new Keyblade and see just how much better I got in a year and a half. How much better can I make this now with all, everything that I learned? So you get better, I promise you guys, you get better. Um, I could dedicate a whole stream to showing you every imperfection and every single thing I hate about my Mark 85 suit. It's terrible up close. Hopefully none of you'll ever have to see it. Um, or maybe some of you will see it. Maybe we'll run to each other at Comic-Con. Um, I, okay. A small part of me, like, it'd be really cool to want, run into one of you in public. Like, just like, oh my God, you're that guy, like, on YouTube. And for the love of God, it better be YouTube. If I ever run into somebody and they're like, you're that guy from TikTok, I just, I'm deleting everything. It's, I'm taking it all down. It better be YouTube. I'll take Instagram too. <laughs> but it would be really cool. Um, that's like, I don't know, that's like a little goal. That'd be really just awesome. Like, oh my God, you know me. <laughs> It doesn't count if you work on base. You don't, you don't count. Um, Discord stream after. So there is no Discord stream after. I'm having an MVP only game night with my patrons after this. That is a private stream. That's the only thing you guys miss out on on the channel um, because they're patrons. They help fund this a lot. So um, I'm doing a game night with them um, to say thank you for everything. We do one once a month, sometimes two a month if I forget to do it the previous month. <laughs> so questions. Yep, 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 yep. All right, actually, so for this, we're kind of done talking about this. So we're gonna do this thing. We're gonna move here and then I'm gonna crawl under. Where's the mouse? There it is. Hi guys. I'm gonna move and actually read the, read the chat because we're kind of done over here. I think that went well. Um, and then we're gonna do this. We can unplug that. Enjoy my five o'clock shadow. And we'll kind of wind down the stream with uh, with just some general talking. Oh, I love this new camera setup. This is freaking awesome. 
Hi guys, how are you? Thank you again for coming to the stream. This is really, this is really super, super awesome. Um, and then I can handle the chat. Mods, thank you so much for that. Um, let me just browse through and make sure. Um, so the CR10S easier or the same to learn to use how to use as the 3D Pro? Um, it's a little bit trickier to learn, but they will get the same quality. Have you noticed your prints coming out better with your Ender 5 due to its bed system or not? So, oh, much better and faster. Um, I have a Tron XY S 5S, but I can't get it to show up on my computers. Ooh, that is a Discord question, my guy. I am not familiar with those. How are you liking the Ender 5 Plus? Does the bed moving up and down make it more stable? And Samantha Davis, yes, I can print over 100 millimeters a second um, on my Ender 5 Plus, no problem, without reducing quality. It's pretty wild. I'm actually about to start ramping it up to see um, what other quality I can get out of it. Uh-oh, we've been replaced. We're not needed anymore. You guys did great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Uh, it made that way easier to manage because I just could not, like I was just straining my eyes so bad. All right, you're a victim of your craft. Oh boy, you're not wrong. All right, um, are we back at 100%? There we go, let's do that. Yeah, guys, oh wow, I should just keep that up. Wow, man, my, my eyes that bad, oh no. All right, I'm gonna start here. Um, how are you liking the NFI Plus? That was Samantha Davis, and then we're here. I have a material question. PLA, bad in heat. What is a good cosplay material? I element, helmets, chest. PLA Plus has better thermal resistance. If you really are worried about it, look into Pet G, P E T G. That's what this helmet's printed out of. P Pet G. It's really cool. Do you know if you can do the CR10S upgrades on a Sunlow SA? You can do some of them, I believe. First thing they series, one of the easiest ones. Yes, start with PLA and work yourself up. K uh, KRG props and replicas, yes. Uh, my goal is to see you at Comic-Con 2011, hopefully. Um, I mean, that'd be kind of hard, man. 2011 already passed MJ Studio. I, I bet you mean 2021. <laughs> you really got my brain racking for this challenge. Oh, I hope. Uh, my biggest thing is to make Stormbreaker. Do you recommend a CR uh, over the Pro V2? A CR5 Pro? You mean the CR10S Pro over the V2? Yes, actually. Um, what are you printing on your printers recently? I have, my printers haven't been printing any of my stuff. I'm doing that on Mark 40 commission currently. Any winter painting tips? Get a get a space heater. What is your cheapest printer? Creality Ender 3, $160. Um, I don't think you can charge that. How fast do you print PLA Plus on your Ender? Uh, about 100 millimeters a second. Is there any advantage to the silent board besides sound? Apparently they help with processing speed too. Um, I haven't noticed the difference really. I don't think you'd miss anything. Um, are you looking to get into resin? Yes, one day, after we move and I have a more established workspace, I do want to look into resin. Um, what are your plans or things you would do when you go to Comic-Con? I just want to just walk around in the suit, man. I want to meet people. I, I like, I want to take pictures. I want to hang out and like do pictures and photo shoots. Mm -mm -mm. What do you think about the CR10S Pro V2 till now? I like it, dude. Nick, uh, Nikos Nachos, um, I like it. It's really awesome. I'm probably gonna end up selling my original CR10S and getting a second V2, Pro V2. Um, uh, I'd buy the crap out of the Creality Core XY printer with rails. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um, I wish I, I, I've, I've considered converting, fi trying to figure out how to convert my CR10 Max into like a faux core XY, like the Ender 5 Plus. Um, what silent, I use the Creality silent boards. They work fine for me. Upgrades to the Ender 5 Plus, William Crowell, um, all metal extruder, Capricorn Bowden tube, that's it. And then maybe a silent board if you really want one. How's your stringing with Pet G? Bad. I gotta, I've only done the helmets to now, um, Astroth, um, I still need to I go back and dial it in the pet G properly. Um, no, it, the supports were terrible. Um, getting good bed adhesion was a problem. It started to love 80 degrees on my glass bed. What's that printer on your left? This one? That's my Creality CR10S. If split a 3D model into parts and put the par parts onto different printers, do I need the same size nozzle? No, Defcon, you do not. As long as those 3D models were sliced in the same scale, it doesn't matter what size nozzle you have. However, in the program, you need to make sure that you adjust the nozzle size. Like in Cura, my Ender 3 has a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, but then when I switch to my 10S and 5, it, it automatically changes to a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. 
So you're making the Hulkbuster once you're moving, right? I hope so. Uh, would you recommend the Ender 5 Plus or the CR-10S Pro V2? Whew, this again. Thomas, you're killing me, dude. You're killing me. If you just want big build volume, get the 10, get the 5 Plus. Get the 5 Plus, add the two upgrades that I added in that upgrade video, and that's it. Done. All metal extruder and Bowden Capricorn tube. I should just put a big sticky note somewhere on the stream. Um, that's all you need. Do you have a link to the best Iron Man helmet STL file? The one I've been playing with doesn't fit well together. Thanks, Frank. Uh, check the Discord, Corey Drisdale. Um, in my Discord, there is a fact section at the very bottom with every STL file I have ever printed on all of my social media. Have fun. Like the links, I don't just give them out for free. Some of them you have to pay for. I use the Mark 85 helmet from Akira Yuming on CG Trader. Um, I haven't had any stream with Pet G. Trevor, what temperatures are you running, my guy? And have you messed with retraction? Um, Ender 5 Pro and Ender 5 Plus, is there a big difference? There's a gigantic difference. Uh, build plate size specifically. Here from TikTok, can I use an iMac for 3D printers or should I get a Windows PC? You should turn off caps lock. Um, you should be able to use an iMac. Hi, Tony. Hi, hi Dropwire. How are you? We're winding down, guys. Last 13 minutes of the stream, so get those questions in. Again, thank you for um, tuning into this. This was really cool, and I hope you guys took something from it with what the size comparisons and what you can do and what you can see. Um, we did get a little off topic. That tends to happen. There's a lot of you. Um, <laughs> we might have to start doing super chats for me to actually like get all your questions. This was ridiculous. <laughs> 240 and 70, I did mess the attraction a bit, but only made it further by three millimeters and faster by five. I will copy that. I might try that. Have you ever tried to print cosmetics for cars or missings? No, I have not. People do though. Everything I've talked about doesn't need to apply just to cosplay and props. You can consider the same information if you want to get into the realm of just 3D printing in general. You can look into, um, you know, car parts and medical supplies and things around the house. It doesn't matter. The, 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 the idea still stands on quality, speed, features, size. So they, they all the, they, it all translates pretty well. Would you suggest the Plus rather than the Pro as a second printer? At the moment, I have a CR test. Yes, if you already have a CR-10S, get the Ender 5 Plus. No questions, I just enjoy your channel. Andrew Smith, thank you. What is your Discord? I wanna join it also. Hey, if you're not on the Discord, my mods are about to drop a link because they're awesome. Uh, Super chat, code for the only time I'll accept you guys paying me. <laughs> you're not wrong. Um, I'm thinking about getting a sound board from Ender 3, but I'm worried about having problems with it, so I'm not sure. Uh, mine plugged, dude, mine plugged and played. I'm about to upload a tutorial for the Ender 3 silent board. I just filmed it. I have it. It works great. It is disgusting how quiet the Ender 3 is now. It is, yeah. Do you have any Black Friday plans? Oh, for anybody wondering, too, if you're not in the Discord, you should be, you heathens. Um, if you're not in the Discord, we are going to be making a Black Friday sale um, channel where we, everybody can post up Black Friday sales in relation to 3D printing and 3D modeling. So we'll be sharing Amazon links and codes and stuff. This way you got, it's like a one-stop shop. Like, oh man, this printer's on sale. Like, so make sure you're following the Discord for that. So that channel, it, it, it might already be up or it's about to go up. Um, are there discount codes for Creality? No, I really wish Creality would give me a discount code. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, um, but they do, they did, a, that's where I got that Pro V2. Um, I sold my yellow CR-10S and had it, I sold it for enough to buy the Pro V2 on sale. I upgraded. Um, are there any upgrades for the CR-10S Pro V2? No, you're not gonna need any. Ender 5 Pro or, or CR-10 version two for cap shield or under? CR-10, CR-10. Prussia Slicer or Cura? Uh, Cura, I like Cura. I've never used Prussia Slicer. Um, thanks, I think I might have a printer for Christmas, just caps lock so you see. <laughs> You know what? Adam, it worked. Nobody else do that though. <laughs> did you paint the inside of your helmet on your Mark 85? No, I did not. You can't see it. When it's on my head, dude, you can't see it at all. Like it's so tight, you just, you can't. It's, it's wild. Might be this, might be scale, but for say, printing a full body mannequin to pose and place costume armor, what is the best printer? I, I, the best printer is the best printer you use and however much you want to slice that up. Obviously, bigger will make that easier, but you know the answer to that. Well, I got work in seven hours, so I'm gonna hit the hay. Take it easy, wider. Um, please stop with the cast. Uh, I'm buying a 3D printer due to your TikToks. Thanks for the content. No problem, Carlos. 
guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Please join the... Okay, there it is. Hey, I just got a CR 10S for my birthday, so I'm about to binge watch all your videos all over again to help me. Thanks. You're welcome. Right. <laughs> you got it, random citizen. Are those blue stripes just painter's tape or something? On the CR 10S? No, no, they're they're rubber inserts. Oh, they came with it. Um, 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 um. I'm gonna go. Bye. Bye, Dusty. Um. All right. Are you gonna leave or are you gonna go buy something? That's the real question. How bad is it to put the CR10S Pro V2 in a bedroom, noise-wise? Um, the fan is kind of loud. Um, I don't know if I'd put it in the, put it in a bedroom. Um, do you think it's worth me getting a Z extension for my Ender 3? I'm about to, Mark. Um, I just bought one, and I'm going to upgrade my Ender 3 with it to see what it is, what how it does. Um, updates on the Pogo Pin project. Uh, they shipped. <laughs> hey, real quick, what do you use to weld your prints together? Uh, a soldering iron. I have a whole tutorial for that. Um, have you found upgrading from a single to a dual Z a worthwhile upgrade? I've got a single one and a dual, but they're dip. Um, I don't... I would never put a second Z on my Ender 3. It's too small. Um, vanilla, you're welcome. You're welcome. The best 3D, what was that? That was weird. It just gave me a notification on my computer for my own live stream. That was weird. Um, should look into using a 3D pen and soldering iron instead of scrap PLA. Good use of leftover spools, more control. Painter's Palace, I've never had a problem with control. Um, my soldering iron works fine and it lets me a 3D pen is good, however, that's another thing I need to plug in and hold when I can just lay down scrap and melt it in with a soldering iron. So, there's no point. I already, it, it's, it's tomato, potato at that point. You know, I already have the soldering iron. There's no point for the pen. Um, any recommendations for painter's tape for sharp lines? Frog tape, green frog tape. It's amazing. Uh, I wonder if putting some foam inside the helmet wouldn't it be better than no foam insulation or would that make it too hot? It's gonna be hot regardless. Um, add foam for comfort at the very least. Uh, what if I gotta go to school in a minute here, take it easy. Adios, man. How long does it take you to put the Iron Man suit? About 10 to 15 minutes I can put the whole suit on. YouTubers recommending your videos a lot then, I guess, right? Um, how do you actually print the things? Do you use a computer or like an app? Use a computer, Crash Kitty. You should, when this stream posts Crash Kitty, you should restart it. Um, it'll be live in a few minutes after it's uh, over. We're getting, it's ending in about six, seven minutes. Um, watch the stream, and I have videos to help you get started 3D printing, like intro, basics, how to start 3D printing that explain everything. Nice start stream. Really enjoyed it. Hey, Bebop and Rocksteady, um, TMNT fan, cool. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, like I'm not saying, uh, uh, painters, I'm not saying the 3D pen is bad, I just already have a method that works for me. Um, and I'm stubborn, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I, I don't. That's fine. Um, great video, I was here for your opinion on the Creality Range. I'm a fellow with the Inet 8 on Insta. Take it easy, I'm off to bed. Take it easy, man. Um, thanks for everything, man. I'm really enjoying the stream. I'm enjoying doing this. So, last five minutes. Thank you, guys. Don't forget to go enter that thangs.com giveaway. There is a link for thangs.com in the description down below. Make a 3D model, upload it, Go check out Emily the Engineer so you can answer her exact contest as well, where you just have to 3D print something to enter. So that's pretty cool. Um, thank you, thanks for doing the giveaway with me. This, it's, you know, it's really awesome. Um, I like being able to do these giveaways and give back to you guys. Uh, so with everything growing, everything going the way it is, I'll be able to keep doing these types of things, you know? Like, who doesn't want to win a free 3D printer? That'd have been awesome. That'd have been really cool. I'd enter. I can't enter, I'm running it, so, haha. <laughs> Where can I buy a Frankly Built shirt? <gasps> you mean this? Uh, we're gonna talk about that with the patrons. However, I am trying to open up a, um, just a little uh, uh, Teespring, I think, is the website. I got a couple websites I'm working, trying to figure out where the best place I wanna have some merchandise, like stickers and t-shirts. I made this shirt though. I made, I, I'm not making shirts and sending them out. I don't have time for that. Um, did I hear you correctly earlier? Are you working on the Mark 42 shirt as well? No, you definitely did not hear me correct earlier. I'm working on the Mark 40 shotgun. I'm only printing the suit out as a commission and sending it to somebody. I am not taking commissions now. This is a very rare occurrence because of the way we talked and just, there's, there, there, there's gonna be a video on the entire Mark 40. Once it's all printed, I'm gonna review the files before I send them out because they're pretty cool actually. 
Um, Are you interested in Spider-Man cosplay? No, uh, I'm never gonna do Spider-Man cosplay, I'm sorry. Um, is there any Black Friday, Cyber Monday deals for the Ender 3 that you know of? High schooler just wanting to get into printing? Dude, bro, bro, dude. I don't know at this time. Join the Discord because I, I think you just, I mean, you might have not, you might have missed that. We're gonna have a, stream, um, a channel on the Discord where we post all the deals we're finding around the internet. So maybe you, maybe you can get one cheap. Um, honestly, if there's a Black Friday sale on an Ender 3, I'll probably end up buying just one or two of them to use for future giveaways because I, they're already 160 bucks. If they go down even cheaper, I'm probably just gonna buy a few. Like, why not? Which of those 3D modeling sites work in a phone? Well, I have no idea. Is there a link for Emily the Engineer? Just um, search her on TikTok or Instagram. Or one of my mods can maybe drop a link in that. Uh, I can model practical stuff, not artistic enough for that content. Try it out, man. Try a Draconian Necros. That's a cool name. Um, how do you transport files between the PC and the printer? SD card. You use a little micro SD card. Which do you prefer, Creality Slicer or Ultimate Cura? Ultimate Cura. No offense taken. It's just an opinion. Both work great. You're right. Thank you for having a actual conversation with me about that. Some people don't. Uh, sticker Mule is good if you don't mind mailing them. Yeah, I, I can't. I don't have time to mail them, man. I don't. Seriously, watch Frank's videos if you want to learn 3D printing. Learn loads and was made very easy by Frank. Plus, this course is amazing. It filled the great info. Awesomely helpful. Geeky Pete, you're just sucking up. <laughs> Thanks, man. Um, I love the Mark 40 shotgun. Any plans for big new new big project after Star Boost? Mave? Oh yeah, and I'm not telling you guys anything about it. I gotta keep I gotta keep some secrets. Yeah, my Creality should be here Monday. Hell yeah. Just want to say, love your channel. Found it through Reddit. I gave you an award. Oh, thank you, thank you for the awards. <laughs> I always try to I say thank you every time to the reward award itself to let me buy one and trying to convince my fiance to let me buy one. Any advice? Tell her that um, you can make money off of it properly by following the proper legal channels. You can sell things and make money off of it. Can you talk about commercial licensing on 3D files for commissions? SS Style, that was my previous live stream. Go watch it. Uh, Discord channel, there's a link down below for it in the description or it'll probably pop up in the chat in any minute now. Oh, it's right there. Actually, it just popped up. So ask away, ask away. No, thank you, Henry Lynn. I appreciate it. I'm not sponsored. Don't demonetize me. Videos to look forward to coming out this week and in the next few weeks. I have installing the silent main board in a Ender 3, um, a build and review of the Creality CR10S Pro V2. How to motorize an Iron Man helmet. Yeah, we'll put that one out there. How to motorize an Iron Man helmet. And what I mean by that is how to install the servos and the hinges. And then there's gonna be another video about how to move the Iron Man helmet with my style of wiring. And then how to motorize an Iron Man helmet using Arduino made by, it, it's a special kit made by Crashworks. So that's really cool. So I got some cool videos coming out. I have the Infinity Stone prop videos coming out. I have the Z sword coming out. I have, as some of you saw, I have the Blades of Chaos. So obviously there's gonna be a God of War video. Mark 40 video, or Mark 39 videos. Um, Keyblade video. Samus video. Burp, I'm up to 11. What else we got in works? We got, we, got, we, got, we got some stuff, we got some stuff. Yarnborn video, which I can't believe I didn't upload yet. Sorry Q, I love you. Um, at least 12 videos I have basically filmed already. And then the five, six, seven Infinity Stone projects I'm working on, so. Normally you drink Coke, I see, oh that is Pepsi. I didn't even realize that, oh wow. Whatever's on sale. <laughs> if you got a WhatsApp, I'd be down, don't have a Discord. Download Discord, dude. Uh, love the channel, Starboost is sick. You really inspired me to get a 3D printer. Isaiah the boy? Isaiah, I'll go with Isaiah. You're welcome. Um, Two, two, two. Got to go, Frank. Have a great night. Great stream. See you in the next one. Take it easy, Scott. Um, it'd be my only channel. Maybe. That's, that's, it's, I only have two channels. That's one of them. No problem. Oh, hey, Q. You're here. <laughs> the time stone is shining a lot. Yeah, it is. Why didn't I see you yet? Jesus. Sneaky, sneaky. 120 watching, 100 like 10 people are slacking. Yeah, I'm a slacker. It's probably just background noise for them. So we're gonna wrap up the stream, guys. That's gonna be it for this one. 
Um, I really appreciate you guys coming out. Uh, I hope you learned something. If you tuned in late, please, I implore you, go watch, go, go rewatch the entire video. Um, we talk a lot about the different sizes of the printers, the features, kind of the cost, what you should look for um, in, in, when determining size. Are you going to print small or are you going to print big? So go check that out. Um, check out the rest of the channel if you're new to the channel. Um, I have a lot of cool videos, a lot of tutorials, a lot of cool things coming out. I'm also putting out a lot more basic videos. I have those in, in work. It'll, I'm like one video I'm working on is how to slice up 3D printed parts. And it's just gonna, it's gonna be about cutting, that's it. Slicer, mesh mixer, net fab, that's it. Just bare bones, how to cut 3D prints. Things like that to kind of give you guys um, a little more insight and be more specific in the things I'm trying to teach you. So stay tuned for the videos like that. Um, I do have the third video of the painting tutorial coming out, how to clear coat and polish and buff and wax. Um, I'm almost done with the Ender 5 Plus build series. I got two videos left for that. We're making a whole Iron Man bust on the Ender 5 Plus. Um, and yeah, go join the Thanks.com contest on TikTok. So uh, let's see. Good night, good night, good night. You inspire a cool do, do, do. Kai Gray, you're welcome. Awesome stream. Thank you. How to go out and got some stuff. And I seem to have missed this. Sadly, you're going to works. No, Oliver Yates, it's a it'll it's a um, patron only live stream after this. Um, they burned it, <laughs> um, but you can go rewatch this right after. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, no camera issues, just some weird audio issues in the beginning, and um, still not. Don't really remember how we fixed that. It was really weird, but I don't know. Yeah, um, you guys have a great night, and. Uh, I, uh, oh, I also sorry. Uh, Want to interject real fast. I also noticed that a lot of my live videos weren't actually in some of the playlists that they were supposed to be in. I've gone through and actually added a lot of relevant live streams to some of my, my cosplay tutorial playlist, my 3D printing playlist. So you'll, you should, if you guys go back through some of the, 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 um, the playlists, you'll, you're gonna see new videos in them from previous streams. Um, and I've edited the title to be a little bit more relevant to what the stream ended up being about. So go check those out. Um, there's, there's a lot of information in the live streams, guys, because you guys ask so many questions. So go give those of you. Um, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. You guys have a great night. And um, thanks. <laughs>